I'm excited, everybody. I, I, I've been hearing good things about the new Sonic game. Like I think somebody actually said it has Sonic in it. There it, there it is. Now take a look at this, everybody. Experience Sonic like never before. Now I've experienced Sonic like before, but never like never before. What sort of surprises they'll have in store for me, I can't even guess. Oh, I, I started up Sonic Forces in my excitement. Hang on, let me, let me fix that real quick. Wow, so this is nuts. All right, I'm being a little harsh, but you gotta admit that starting the game off with Green Hill for the six billionth time in a row, that's, that's some weak tea, dude. So, I got the game on PS5 instead of PC, and while I'm sure the latter will get plenty of cool and funny mods to go through, uh, and for me, nothing quite beats just having the physicality right here. You can just pop in and play. Like, really, it's the convenience that you're paying for when you buy physical. Ah, the joys of console gaming. Well, while we wait for the um the PS5 to do its do its thing, uh, why don't we take a look at the at the box art, or should I say, boxes art? Haha. <laughs> I guess because I pre-ordered, which is something you really shouldn't do, folks. I mean, I was going to review the game anyway, so it doesn't really matter if I pre-order. And not that I was going to get an early copy anyway. Sega hates my guts. It certainly is steel, I guess. Like it, it, it's got the logo, and it's it's there. It's got. Zap on the back. I, I, I don't, I don't like these things. They, they somehow feel cheaper than the plastic cases. It's still got plastic in it. It's not like you're saving the environment by buying a steel book. These things are so uh, uh, freaking thin. They, 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 they wobble. They, 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 they're not even heavy. Here on the regular copy, you got Sonic grinding on the cover, which is great because it's not false advertising, and 90% of the game is indeed grinding. Well, you've already seen the back, so why don't we take a look inside? Ah, I mean, usually we've got like you know, on PS5 cases, you know, reversible covers with some, awesome, you know, some neat art tucked away. Oh, sick! Ads and words. You wish your copy looked like this. Gee whiz, this is just sad. I mean, I, the only thing of interest in here is once you get rid of that. Uh, the, the, the Adventurer's Treasure Box, which just has upgrade currencies, which, trust me, y you're not gonna need. I, I didn't use it for my playthrough, so, I mean, if this code still works, it's yours. You better be quick, though. You've only got ten years left. Ah, finally! We're all set to begin. Here we go. Okay, don't shoot me, but why do the cutscenes look like they were made in SFM? You know, Source Filmmaker. It's really weird. I'm not trying to shout all over them. No, they look much better than Force's cutscene. Uh, it's not saying much, I know, but uh, pretty much all of Frontier's cutscenes have that same strange... How do I put it? Uh, Fan-made look to them? Not that they're super low quality or anything. That's not what I'm trying to say. There's tons and tons of great-looking fan-made animations out there. Uh, but I'm not sure what it could be. Emotion blur? The aspect ratio, Bloom? Did anyone else get the same impression? Please let me know. Am I going crazy? Another thing I'd like to get off my chest before we really get properly started, and I'm sorry I'm complaining again, but this is yet another Sonic game that doesn't have any CG cutscenes made for it other than in its advertising, like Sonic Generation, Sonic Forces, and Lost World. Well, Lost World did have one, but it only took place in the sky at the beginning of the game. I'm hoping that with the success of Frontier Sega will give the team a bigger budget and allow some proper CG cutscenes to be created for the biggest moments in the game. You know, like Sonic Heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog, and Sonic Unleashed. Say what you will about Shadow the Hedgehog, but its CG cutscenes still look fantastic. Wow, it's like he really killed Sonic! And with that complaining past us, it looks like Eggman's traveled out here to ruined Forest Zone. Just kidding, new zones don't exist, they never did. And he slaps his digital discus onto whatever this thing is, but gets pulled inside after origami ninjas pop out of the ground. You know what? It's not what I was expecting, and for that I'll give it credit. Come on, Tails, can't you read? The subtitles clearly say we're coming up on the Starfall Islands, and yet you say, coming up, Starfall Islands. Next on Disney Channel. How exciting. Yeah, you are uh, really sound excited there. Well, unfortunately for Sonic and the gang, while they want to get to the Starfall Island, the Starfall Island doesn't want them to get to it. Thus, they're plunged into a big old digital looking portal in the sky. Now, we've had plenty of cyberspace-based levels before in Sonic games. For example, uh, Shadow the Hedgehog had Mad Matrix and Digital Circuit. You've got uh, Cybertrack from Sonic Advance 3. Sonic Riders had a few. They're all pretty different from one another, so uh, I'm interested to see what sort of different aspects to it they're going to go with here. Uh, 
looks like the back of the box has already lied to me. Experience Sonic like never before. I'll have you know I've experienced being disappointed by Sonic many times before. Let's ignore the fact that Sonic Team brought back the green and brown checkerboard where creativity goes to die for a bit. And let me tell you how my first impressions of the controls went. Not well! I'll be honest though, that was mainly the fault of the first level. In later levels, I quite enjoyed controlling Sonic. For the most part, we'll touch on that later. Oh, the touch might be the wrong word to use here. Open palm squeezing is probably more accurate. I'm going to molest Sonic. I played around for a minute or two, and to be honest, I didn't like it all that much. At first, anyway, uh, once you get a hang of the controls or get used to them, he's actually pretty fun to dart around with. The only really big problem you'll notice right off the bat is that his jump's still as stiff as it was in Forces. He's extremely heavy in the air, and just turning around is a monumental chore. Look at this! He's stiff as a board! What am I turning around in, treacle? Somehow it also gets momentum out of nowhere. If you're up against the wall holding forward and jump, or have happened to be running into that wall, and then stop and jump, he'll just keep going. Just for reference, here's some other Sonic games. This sort of thing's never happened before, not even in Forces, so I don't know how on earth it's a thing here. If you really hate landing on platforms accurately, then actually this jump might just be for you, but if you swing the other way, then uh, good luck, buddy. I I'd use the stomp to land immediately, but uh, we'll get to that later. One smaller issue is that Sonic's homing attack has a little delay after you hit an enemy. You can't bounce off of them like you could in Adventure 2, Heroes, or Unleashed. This is very much so the Forces homing attack, just now somehow slower. It also didn't help my first impressions when I noticed Sonic standing in midair for a split second when he touched the gold ring. All of these things I've mentioned, uh, the green hill, the stiff jump, the wonky homing attack, the standing in midair, and the weird house music. What is this? What am I listening to? Who made this? Does this really scream green hill to anybody? We're all leading up to my early assumptions being accurate and that the latest Sonic game, once again, is Big Poo Poo. But thankfully, the game does have its merits, uh, and is actually kind of fun, albeit deeply flawed and uh, kind of undercooked, like like a half-baked biscuit. You know, like, it, yeah, sure, it still tastes all right, but uh, could you not have just left it in the oven for another five minutes, maybe? I played the first level a few times over to test out the gameplay a little bit more, and of course complete the four missions, which are present in every level from here on out, the first one being Reach the Goal, which... I mean, duh. The next one is to clear the level with an S-rank time, which was surprisingly, well, not difficult. It's the first level after all, but you did actually have to get a semi-decent time here. You couldn't dilly-dally around. I was surprised. Uh, usually for a time ranking in something like Generations, it's very forgiving. Uh, unfortunately, it's just the time that affects your rank, so even in the first level, I realized the slow-ass homing attack wasn't doing me any favors, so from here on out, whenever I could skip an enemy, I just did so. There's no score or mission associated with them, so unless you really have to, they're more of a obstacle, I guess. The third mission is to collect a certain amount of rings. This one kind of just felt like filler. If you're going to go for an S rank, a lot of the time you'll be skipping rings and then you got to do the level again afterwards. And I, I, I don't know, sure, whatever. I, it was never hard to get the allotted rings, so who am I to complain, right? And if the level's fun overall, then it's not a big deal replaying it a couple more times. Plus, they're all pretty short. Some extremely short. And the last mission is to collect, of course, you can't forget them, the red rings, which is just terrible. 99% of the time, they're just placed along the lowest or easiest route, meaning again, if you're at all decent at the game, you know, reaching the faster and higher routes, the thing you want to be doing, you're probably not going to see that many. This was a problem in Forces 2, and I'm kind of upset to see it's exactly the same here. Uh, some of these levels have a lot of different paths to go through, which is great, but they never really felt difficult enough to get to, or to stay on for that matter. Like, I was picking path A, B, or C just on a checklist, and each one just had a slightly different traversal time. Anyway, going back to the red rings, maybe the completion bonus for getting them all is so cool and amazing that Sonic Team just wanted everyone to be able to get it, including their grandma, so I guess we'll just have to see. Well, now that we're done with the the first 42 seconds of the game. Uh, let's move on to the main event. My ass! Tails? Amy? Oh. Who's... Oh. Looks like I'm the only one who made it out of that... whatever it was. I know! I know what it was! You have done the impossible. You have escaped cyberspace through your own power. You are the key. Key, huh? Sure beats being called a rodent. Are you saying I can rescue my friends? 
Bitch, did I say that? Stop trying to gaslight me, dude. When you first start the game, before Eggman's wilderness exploration adventure and Sonic's Green Hill Shahathon, the game presents you with a couple of choices. Firstly, the difficulty, which changes a couple of things, like enemy HP and such, like what you'd expect really, and the option to play in either action style or high speed style. It doesn't really tell you what exactly the difference is between the two, only that action style is recommended for newer Sonic players. I'm gonna be real with you though, whether you're new to Sonic or not, for the love of God, don't pick action style. All that shit does is cap your boost speed to the lowest setting, I mean, you're basically not even boosting at that point. My God, it'd drive you insane. I picked hard mode because I'd have to be stupid to pick anything else after forces, and I'm sorry I've mentioned forces so much, but it was the last 3D Sonic game to come out before this one, so there's gonna be some comparisons, okay? And as it turns out, it's actually the intended experience. To me, that's kind of stupid, but we'll get into that much, much later on down the line. Would have been great if there'd been an extra hard mode, because the game is still piss easy, apart from one segment, which I can't spoil just yet. Again, we'll, we'll get to that. I suppose you could just play the game without upgrading Sonic's attack or defense. Uh, you know, kind of like how you'd nuzlocke a Pokemon game, you know, a self-inflicted challenge. I also picked the high speed style, of course, because I'd like to eventually finish the game. It took me about 20 hours to 100% it, but if I'd picked action style, I'm pretty sure that time would have doubled. Even if you did pick action style, as I said before, you're not actually stuck with it. You head on over to the controls menu and you can change the speed cap there. This is, I guess, Sonic Team's answer to every Sonic fan out there who wants Sonic to control differently to others, so like, here, you do it then. Again, do yourself a favor, just crank the settings up to the max, other than the initial starting speed. It feels really weird to just see Sonic kind of clip into a run. I ended up putting it around 20% or so. Now this is epic. Holy shit! All right, I have a taste of my son. Ah! Okay, no problem. What the hell was that, Sega? You only taught me how to homing attack and lock on. What'd you expect? It's like if Dark Souls started off by teaching you how to jump and lock on, and then all right, he's ready. Throw the balls at him. Not that you'd know it from my floundering here, but the combat is it's kind of fun. Not fun enough to warrant wanting to do it over some fun 3D platforming, but hey, when there's a new enemy, it's sort of fun to figure out how to defeat it, other than those little shaft stains that turn into cylinders, those guys can go slurp sheep shit through a boba straw. I think he lost a contact lens. EPIC GAME DESIGN! As you probably already know, Sonic Frontiers does away for the most part with level-by-level -level design, instead opting in for a wide-open immersive... Immer immersive... world with... With, with, with chat. I'll be honest with you, I kind of like the uh, whole open zone thing they've got going on here. Apart from Island 3, Island 3 is not for me. But even if this was the most content packed, exciting open world or open zone as they're calling it, in all of video game history, the constant popping of these floating platforms in the sky and the rails and the objects, it really takes you out of the experience. I mean, you get used to it, sure, but at least have like a glitch effect or something on it, you know, when they pop in and then at least it matches the theme. As it is now, it's really distracting and it certainly doesn't help when you're trying to find the next little platforming challenge, but you know, it hasn't teleported in yet. Speaking of these little platforming challenges, then uh, I'm trying to make this all flow together really well, but in order to talk about the platforming challenges, I gotta talk about the collectibles and the open world and, 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 and how that all goes together. Making videos is hard. So let me make things easier for both my head and yours. Uh, here's Sonic. Now oh, I know what you're thinking. That's the freaking forces model! And you'd be right, he's the forces model through and through. From the blank stare to the shitty stance, he's got it all! But check it out! Holy crap, as a Sonic fan, my expectations are blown away because they were really low. That's right, everybody, Sonic's got his idle animations back. He still doesn't take the time to moisturize his eyes with a bit of blinking when he's not doing it, but hey, it's a Sonic game, I'll take what I can get. Now, what sort of gameplay can we expect from this Sonic? Adventure style? Boost style? Lost World style? Sonic Boom style? Oh, if only. Actually, it's kind of a mixture of all four. You've got the easily controllable movement on the ground like an adventure, a boost button, which is practically the boost from, you know, the boost games and the run button from Lost World put together and an emphasis on fighting with kicks and punches like in Sonic Boom. Except it's nowhere near as good as in that game. Oh, they've really dropped the ball on that one. As I mentioned before, Sonic's jump is by far the worst part of his kit. It really sucks that even though you've got pretty great control of him on the ground, as soon as you jump, he swaps to forces physics. And this includes the homing attack too. It's not like the adventure games where wherever you're holding the analog sticky homing attack suit, Sonic has to be physically facing the enemy in order to homing attack it. And when the media controls are this stiff, it gets kind of annoying. 
annoying. The camera also needs to be facing the enemy, so I hope you've got those right stick fingers primed and ready. It's also worth mentioning that you don't actually need to be in the air to do a homing attack. Sonic will just kind of home in on the nearest enemy when you press the button, regardless of if you've jumped or not. On the one hand, this makes attacking enemies pretty snappy, but on the other, it can lead to some annoyances. wanted to punch the barrel. He still got the stomp and the slide and ladder never actually needing to be used, I think, ever. And now if you hold down the stomp button, you'll do a weird half bounce, half stomp sort of thing, which on the third stomp, it creates this very cheap looking electrical attack. It does bounce you a little higher than a regular jump though, so it's sometimes useful for platforming. Uh, to me, this kind of feels like Sega was like, oh shit, we did they want the bounce bracelet back. What do we do? I know, we'll turn the stomp into the bounce and it'll look real janky. It, re it really does look like a mod. Like, <laughs> it just does. It, I, I, I don't know how they thought that one was finished. Sonic also now speeds up as you're stomping, accelerating downwards, which is a nice change. Otherwise, it would take a long time to hit the ground in this open world environment. He's also got his light speed dash back, now called the light dash, which which I mean, that's fine, but wouldn't have renaming it to something like the ring dash make a bit more sense? When I think of light dash, I think, you know, zooming along a light beam like in Shadow the Hedgehog. Funny thing about the light dash, I found the place to use it at the start of the game, but I hadn't been told how to do it yet. I, I figured I just hadn't unlocked it. You know, so I've got this new skill tree for battle moves and the such, and we'll talk about that later. But just in case I looked it up online and... Lo and behold, I had it all right! And why on earth wasn't there just some sort of tutorial? I, I, it took up until the seventh cyberspace stage for the game to finally mention it, and learning that shit's optional! I could have gone the whole game without knowing how to do it! Think of the children, Sega. Think of the poor, stupid children. Can't forget about the drop dash. Wait, yes you can. Sonic's got a brand new move called the side loop. The side loop. The spin cycle. For the most part, it's essentially a glorified interact button, whether that be for something like starting up a challenge, picking something up, not sure how that works, uncovering something hidden, or maybe even putting out a flame. Ah. You can also use it in battle to knock enemies into the air, break their shields, break certain weak parts, and so on. Using it on nothing in particular will also net you some rings, which is kind of busted when you think about it. When Sonic hits his ring cap, he gains a super speed boost, or whatever they call it. I I don't think they give it a name, but in order to get those rings, don't worry about exploring or nothing, just spin around in a circle for a minute or two. Super speed bo 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 boost ahoy! My god, it's one in the morning and I'm doing this. Sometimes you can even find upgrade items. I suppose it's kind of like Knuckles' dig from Sonic Adventure, except you always get something. As you can see here, with a small circle, it'll give you a couple of rings, but you make it Among Us and it'll give you a bunch, but hey, draw a penis and that's some skill points right there. Skill points, you're asking? What's a skill point? This isn't Sonic Unleashed. Radical Soda's never gonna finish this. Unless. Sonic's got a brand new skill tree with all sorts of new moves from to show off pretty much all in battle. You get these points by doing different things, like uh, breaking open boxes and such, killing enemies, and doing tricks where you just kind of wiggle the analog stick around and Sonic will have some sort of seizure in midair. I kept thinking it was like the generation's tricks and then found myself hitting L1 and R1 to finish the combo, but that just makes Sonic go into his parry stocks, which... <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's just Shadow the Hedgehog all over again. Oh, and Sonic can still quick step, which is kind of weird. I guess I assumed with the better controlling Sonic, you don't really need the quick step, but it is kind of useful in certain areas, I guess. And it is forced upon you in one of the mini boss fights. Uh, thankfully, the only fight that utilizes the quick step, unless you count rail grinding as quick stepping too, which it basically is, I suppose, assuming the quick step also randomly sends you flying backwards sometimes. Weird thing with the quick step though is that it has a delay for something that was so functionally fine and, well, Generations and Unleashed forces be damned, it's incredibly annoying for it to be this slow. It's actually really faster than that one mini boss I mentioned earlier. Mamma mia! But in the overworld and cyberspace stages, it's got like half a second of delay before it goes off, meaning, well, it's a slow step now. Aha! I think this is because of the new parry move, like it needs that delay to make sure you're not trying to also hit the other bumper. As you know, that move uses the L1 and R1 buttons together. But I much would have rather than just put the parry on L2 then. That button does less than me on a Saturday. Oh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's kind of rude. What's even weirder is that in cyberspace, it's still got the delay, but in those levels, you can't actually use any of the fighting moves. So checking to see if you're parrying is pointless. Speaking of cyberspace, all over the islands you'll find their level gates scattered all around. In order to access these, you'll need to acquire the Gears of Mystery, which you can get from killing the big bosses roaming the area. Here's one I prepared early. 
And there you go. Once you've got yourself a brand new gear, why am I acting like this is a guide or something? Shut the fuck! I don't know. Sonic stanky leg got past the QA team. This happens every single time you put a gear in. So into cyberspace we go. Clearly they're taking old levels and remaking them. So what sort of cool level are we gonna get? Angel Island, Marble Zone, Mr. Cave. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, Sky Sanctuary. Nice. Funnily enough, this level's the only one in the game with an actually difficult to get S rank. And that, well, that makes it kind of fun, actually. Trying to get this S rank was one of the most memorable moments of the game, you bitch. Take a look at this. It looks like ideal for Sonic's quick step here, you know, with three lanes. But apparently Sonic's quick step was more like a quick leap. And now I'm hitting the quick step, but not going anywhere. Uh, yep, that's right, folks. You want a quick step one up against the wall? You're Bit of luck asking for a rich guy for a million dollars. This level isn't difficult or anything. In fact, it's extremely simple. The first red ring is literally slapped right in front of you with the very start. But having a goal to work towards and trying to be faster and faster, you know, finding new ways to shave off a few seconds here and there. I haven't had this much fun with a new 3D Sonic game in, what, 10 years? Which isn't really saying much, but hey! The only thing we need now is new level themes and different music because I freaking hate this! I don't think it's really news that I dislike the vocal tracks and forces. I know generally I think the majority of people who played that game like the vocal tracks the most. Um, and, and that's fine. If you like the new cyberspace tracks and frontiers, I'm happy for you. That's great. It's just not my cup of gamer subs using Code Radical. My personal favorite soundtracks from the series will always go to, like, Sonic Heroes, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Generations, Shadow the Hedgehog, you know. Music that fits the level more so than it's just trying to... I don't know what these tracks are trying to do. I, 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 I don't, they don't suit the level themes, which is something Sonic games used to do really well before, uh, like, um, before forces, I guess. Once you beat a cyberspace level, you get rewarded with vault keys, and if you manage to beat all the missions, you get a few extra. And these keys can be used to unlock the Chaos Emeralds from their vaults. I unlocked three immediately, so I even knew the game was three hours long. Which is still an hour more than Forces! Or there was something else afoot. Thankfully, the game is not three hours long, and there's still a lot more to talk about. Like the Cocos! <laughs> which, which are definitely not Korok Seeds! <laughs> they have an elf. They have an elf too! <laughs> oh, hell yeah! Purple coins! Once you're out exploring in the overworld, there's a couple of different things to do. The first being little challenges that are sprinkled all over in order to unlock more vision on the map. Here's a little challenge that requires you to... Uh, homing attack a few times. They're all this easy, unfortunately. Noteworthy challenges here include racing a timer to a button, which quite frankly gives you way too much time even on the final island. This type of challenge is just literally a joke. You're running on a hamster wheel to charge it up before time runs out, which... Unless you literally don't know how to move an analog stick, you're not gonna fail. You don't even need a boost. You've also got, uh, using the cyclop on something. Quick stepping. Yep. Holy shit, is that the Sonic Boom puzzle? These challenges are never really that interesting or, well, challenging. Which is kind of the whole point of it. You get it. I, I feel like they're just here to pad out the time and, and they needed some way for the map to be revealed, but yeah, I don't know, this ain't it. These feel more like a checklist than actual engaging gameplay most of the time. Thankfully, if you do want some engaging gameplay, it is here just in the form of... Well, I want to say the open world platforming, but that'd be kind of... Well, lying. So the main gameplay loop is all about collecting tokens or trinkets to help Sonic's friends out in the overworld. Imagine if every time you wanted to progress the story, money bags from Spyro was there begging for more. Uh, well not generally, heart, crystal hearts. This ain't a terrible system by any means, I mean it gives you a reason to explore, and it's just unfortunate that the exploring isn't really part of the island. It, it's hard to explain, but the platforming in the overworld isn't really, well for the most part, part of the overworld. Sometimes there'll be a tower or a cliff face or a wall you can run up, you know, but most of the time the exploring in this game comes from the floating grind rails and square platform segments. Like, for lack of a better comparison, Forces has this a lot, it's got a lot of block levels, Colors does this too, even the bloody Origins game slapped them in. The difference in Frontiers here being, uh, well, they're not blocks anymore, uh, they're, they're platforms. Even loops and shit are made out of these things, it would have really killed them to make a simple circle. I was gonna do a joke about how I could draw a circle freehand, you know, better than Sonic Frontiers is. Uh, loops, but I just, I noticed. <laughs> it's not that they totally don't make sense here. It's, you know, cyberspace and 
ancient technology is the big theme in this game, and the platforms look kind of cybery, but you gotta admit, at the very least, they could have made them look more ruin like. Like the rest of the island? Grind rails could maybe be vines or you know, stone, and maybe with moss growing on the top to create a slidey surface, or. It's just really weird to look up and see floating grind rails everywhere, you know? Like, at least give them little thrusters or something to give us a reason as to why they're stuck in the air. And I know previous Sonic games have had floating rails too, but in those games, you never really stood under them. You're always racing by on top. And standing beneath them just. It, it just looks weird. But I, I, I'm starting to talk about, like, you know, polish and things that the game needed like right at the start of the game as a, a general design standpoint which is something i feel like the team behind this didn't really have the time for it just judging by the raw amount of ass blasting poppin you see at all times anyway usually at the end of these little platforming segments you'll find a token or two for sonic's friends as i've already said you need these to start up what's usually a cutscene where you'll get to hear the characters interact with each other i heard ian flynn was behind the writing of these interactions or just character dialogue in general and for the most part i think it's pretty good Apart from Amy, but we'll, we'll get to her. Uh, the delivery, however, um, whoever was the voice director, uh, uh, just I think they just did a bad job at, you know, directing, I guess. Oftentimes characters will feel like they're talking at one another rather than to each other. And yes, there is a difference, believe it or not, guys. I feel like this happens the most with Amy and Knuckles. Sonic, for the most part, uh, is pretty good. They're probably the best he's been so far in any modern game. I don't know, I guess I'm just that awesome. Yeah. Well, um, it took me a while to get used to this deeper voiced Sonic, and while I still don't think it suits his design all that much, again, slightly redesigning all the characters would have helped out a lot here. But it's not as distracting as you'd think it'd be, and it quickly becomes just, you know, another part of Sonic's character. Even Amy's voice has changed. I thought her boom take was pretty bang on, but I guess they went with a different direction here. Uh, that being serious, uh, we must be serious at all times, guys. Again, not a bad voice particularly for Amy, but it just doesn't suit uh, uh, this monstrosity. Oh, yeah, out of out of all the Sonic characters, she needs a redesign the most. Anyhow, on this island, Sonic finds Amy trapped in a big red pufferfish. Once he breaks her out with the power of love... <laughs> Look, if they're gonna just pretend Amy doesn't have a raging heart on for Sonic like in the past games, that's fine, I don't care. But then why go make her trinket a heart? Wouldn't have a... a... There's nothing. She's she's got no personality or defining traits. Give her hammers. The pufferfish doesn't like this though, and so takes refuge in Sonic's arm, which clearly hurts him, corrupting his 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 textures. I've been infused with weird zappy stuff before. Besides, I feel like it gave me some kind of boost. Yep, it sure did. With the power of injuring himself, Sonic can now do the Denny's Grand Slam, which allows him to counter after parrying an attack. I always thought this was kind of weird, like, Oh no, my arm! What am I gonna do? With this new power, I can finally animation cancel short hop fear. I'm stronger than I thought. Now here's a big boss, Asura. It can be intimidating, I know, but check it out! A training simulator to help you prepare! Wall run? Oh, hell yeah! I think Okay, I think we're ready now. Alright, here we go! Holy crap, is that a syrup? Oh, training simulator. Gotta learn how to wall run first. Okay, we're back with the skills we need. A Holy crap, is that a syrup? Oh, hey, a training simulator. Holy crap, is that a syrup? Just kidding, guys. We'll actually go fight it this time. Sonic, look out! Oh, hey, a training simulator. Asura here is one of my favorite mini-bosses, which is unfortunate because he only appears here on the first island. He'll kick you off every time you destroy one of his big spiky things, but if you're fast enough, you can boost back on and keep wailing on him. Running up a big enemy is something we always see Sonic do in media, so it's pretty neat we actually finally get to do it ourselves here. I, oh, oh, I, oh, I didn't want to fight him anyway. I don't know if this was intentional, but when Sonic gets hit, he doesn't actually lose any rings until he hits the ground. A and the weird thing about that is that you can use a variety of moves to stop falling to the ground, meaning you just don't lose any rings. I, I mean, Sonic still got hit. I is the game telling me the ground is the real enemy here? I suppose landing on it when half your face is taken up by a giant eyeball could do some real damage. You know, there's something inherently just nice about being able to control Sonic well for once. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that is though. Here's the next cyberspace stage and hey, it's a new theme! Kind of. I mean, to be honest, it kind of looks like Speed Highway during the day, which <laughs> they wouldn't bring back three levels from generations, would they? They would do that! Anyway, it's nice to see something somewhat original, even if it does remind- It's 2.5D. They brought back the 2.5D. Ok, 
Yep, it's back! Everyone's least favorite gameplay feature! Slow them down and make them frown! It's the 2.5D special! Unfortunately though, these kinds of levels are anything but special. They're easy, they're simple, and they're just kind of boring. I don't think I have anything else to say. I, I was promised I'd experience Sonic like never before, but oh, I've experienced this before! Oh shit, is that Eggman? I appear to be in a digital dimension. Anyway, so after that cutscene, you gotta fight the big fat genie. Have I mentioned how wonky these menus are? They require way too many button presses. You gotta press accept on the option at the top and then accept the option you wanna change. You just have the left and right directional buttons alter the option you've got highlighted and use the R1 and L1 for flicking over to the big ones at the top. They already actually do this, but you still gotta accept it for some reason. I understand this ain't a huge problem for most people and they'll just kinda roll with it, but as far as a menu goes, I just wanted to point it out because me and my friends felt it was needlessly complicated. Thank you for listening. Did you know in Sonic Frontiers, Sega added the new constipation meter? Don't need to build up too high or Sonic's gonna have a rough time on the toilet. Next level's up, everybody! I really didn't expect to be reviewing every single cyberspace level when I first started this review, but I think it's a nice little segment to spice things up every now and again, you know, with how varied they are and all. <laughs> this green hill, staring at it from afar. Have I seen it before? Wow, Green Hill's looking a lot more like Green Hill right now. I shit you not, this level is just the 3D segments from Sonic Generations Green Hill Act 2 slapped into this one. You run through the intro part, you skip the 2D section and go straight into the giant chopper chase segment, even though there's no giant chopper here because of course there isn't, then you skip the 2D section afterwards and finish it off with the final 3D segment. You're even able to stomp on the bridge to break it. Funny how I did that on my first try, almost like I recognized the level design. Although when it came to adding in the bit where you got a slide, I guess they suddenly grew the part of the brain that feels shame, and you know, that'd be copying too much. This shit's so lazy. I can understand borrowing level design from maybe Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure 2, but taking the level design from a pretty recent game you're also taking most of the assets from? At that point, why don't I just stop playing this and go play Generations? Because this is just a shitty and shorter, slower version of the same level. This goes beyond just reusing a level theme. This is just straight up reusing a level. Remember the first corner in Generations Green Hill where you drift around it? Well, they kept the corner here, and of course you can't drift, so Sonic just slams his pretty little face into the wall no matter what you do. And even though I can do this in the open world, here in Green Hill I'm stiffer than a poop in a brothel. Who tested this and was like, yeah, this is great, I love giving Sonic concussions. Even if you're ready for it, you only just barely make it around. I, I, whatever, I, I don't care anymore. Let's talk about, uh, momentum. There isn't any. Now piss off. This isn't a big deal, to be honest. I'm not expecting Sonic Team to suddenly understand how to make a perfect 3D Sonic game. The drop dash in the overworld comes kind of close to feeling mumming to me, but when it loses steam, there's not really a way to build it up again, even if you're rolling down a hill. What they could have done is treated it like the slide in forces. That thing actually slipped down hills like a stick of butter on a lubed up water slide, but then, you know, actually let it carry a momentum further than just kind of stopping in place once you hit the end of the ramp. I don't think that would have been too hard to be honest. The only really annoying thing about the momentum here and the way it works, well aside from it being really wonky looking, I mean just look at Heroes for a comparison, is that some dash panels will act like this, where you're given control almost immediately and therefore have to keep, you know, the button held to go forward, but just others will yank it away from you for a decent chunk of time, leaving you in an area you had no intention to visit, usually, sometimes a 2.5D segment even, oh the horror. He's gonna be a nightmare to get out of sometimes. A bit more on that later. <gasps> Check it out! A wall that needs to be climbed! Training simul- I Oh hell yeah, I've been training for this. What?! Soon enough, Sonic runs into a giant guard- uh, Titan. It's a Titan. It's an original idea, and Pokemon definitely didn't also copy this exact thing from Breath of the Wild. What's Breath of the Wild?! Ha <laughs> ha, you stupid bitch! I found the one bad frame in the cutscene, and now I can give the game a 1 out of 10. Nuts to you, woke leftists! We'll see who lowers the Metacritic score for who. Sonic does the homing attack against the Titan, but he forgets how to punch, so it pounds a sorry blue butt just like it's been dreaming of doing, throwing him right through a couple of towers and into a cliff face. <sighs> okay. I'm not taking that thing down the traditional way. I'm gonna need the Chaos Emeralds. And maybe a little bit of luck. I find it really funny how in this game Sonic gets flung through two rock towers and into a cliff and he's perfectly fine afterwards, but then in Sonic Forces he gets punched a couple of times by Zavok and friends and he's out for the count. 
Well, seeing as I, I used them right after this cutscene, I should probably talk about the little upgrades you can get throughout the game. You've probably noticed the four stats down there on the bottom left all saying 1 out of 99, and no, that's not the Sonic Forces Metacritic score. <laughs> and while there is four stats down there, there's only two different ways to upgrade them. The first one is by collecting these red colored heart fruit things and the blue balls. Then you hand them off to this Elder Coco. I swear they're not copying, guys. Sonic would never take something from another game. Don't even entertain the thought. And he'll take them as a, some sort of currency and upgrade your attack and defense. However, I should mention one bit of fruit does not equal one level, though. As you get higher and higher stats, the amount needed goes up and up. And honestly, I was never too sure of what number I really needed, although not that it really mattered. The game isn't so difficult. One or two levels is really gonna affect the gameplay all that much. Also, can't forget to tell you about the Elder's special ability, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Now, the other two stats, your ring count and your maximum speed, well, they're upgraded by a different, more short Elder Hermit Coco. You give him the little Cocos you can find and collect around the big open levels. And you can see an estimate of how many you have by standing still for a bit and they'll just kind of rock up with the cocks out. Again, no real numbers on how many you need for an upgrade, but again, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. You generally just pick these things up when you see them. I never really went out of my way to search for them. Now, the problem with this specific Hermit... <laughs> Well, you see how you leveled up with the tall, skinny hermit, right? A pretty straightforward, you give him the fruit, he gives you the levels. Now, why don't we take a look at how you level up with this one? Can you spot the problem here? Holy shit, whoever made this at Sega or Sonic Team, screw you, dude! You specifically, why? Why does it take so long? Why does it only do one at a time? Why can't I move the cursor immediately when the menu pops up? Why does he say anything more? Should it be anything else? Anything more just sounds weird. And when you finally get your max speed all sorted, well, onto the rings! I ain't kidding around. Fully upgrading my ring count took me 18 minutes of this shit, which means upgrading both took me 36 minutes! More than half an hour of game time devoted to this! This isn't Sonic Force or Sonic Team, the game ain't two hours long, you don't have to beef it up! I can't believe that upgrading some stats in this game literally takes the same time as beating a quarter of a different Sonic game. What were they thinking? Did somebody actually benefit from this taking so long? Does that same person get off on stuff like this? Is it the Hermit? I could be spending this time talking about how Amy's still a hologram and Tails is missing, but Amy wants to get it Coco laid, but no! Instead, I'm stuck speaking to an old man who can't ask a simple question properly! Never mind the fact that our time on Earth is preciously limited and I'm spending it doing this! I'll tell you what, though. The amount of time wasted here pales in comparison to what you'd be wasting playing in action mode. If the time trials are anything to go by anyway, check it out. I still had 30 seconds left. This aggravates me in three ways. One, if action mode is really so slow it requires this much time, it's too slow, get rid of it. Two, why didn't you scale the time based around how fast my maximum speed is set to? That seems like an obvious workaround for people who want to play in action mode for some weird reason. And three, I think I have hemorrhoids, so I see a doctor about that. If an enemy comes at Sonic or spinning sideways, use parry to defeat it, okay? Ah, I can finally talk about the next mini boss, the creatively named Squid. Now this boss is absolutely crazy, first thing you gotta do is phase through it, that's very important. Then don't forget the second part of the fight where his platform disappears for some reason, and then finally, the fight finishes off with Sonic hovering half a foot above the ground. Now this is how you make the quick step fun! The only other Sonic game with a fun quick step was Unleashed. Please, for the love of God, if you can't include the quick step, Sega, just do it like this! It's only as OP as your reaction time is! Ah! See? This mini boss all in all ain't too bad. Uh, you catch up to it and beat the shit out of it. I, I feel like they could have done something like this in the actual overworld, though, instead of forcing you into a quick step segment. I don't know. It's beautiful here, but there's a loneliness here. Now that is a badly written line. Do I really need to point this out? It's a badly written line in a Sonic game. That's like... That's like... It's like a Sonic game being bad. That's just how it is. <laughs> the reason why I'm pointing it out is because it sticks out, because the rest of them are kind of decent. You don't use the word here twice in a sentence like that. You gotta like kind of mix it up. So uh, things are less repetitive. It's beautiful here, but there's a feeling of loneliness permeating the area. I don't know how Amy would know those words, but she's like an adult in this game, so who cares? Or how about it's a beautiful island, but there's a loneliness here. It's probably more in the range of, a, you know, like a 12 year old. Sonic, he can really move. Sonic, he sees an up call on a one. Sonic, how the hell's he doing that? Now here's something a little different. On each island there's what looks like a regular cyberspace entry somewhere on the map. Usually out of the way, you, you gotta explore to find. But this ain't no green hill! Grab your fish and rod cause we're gonna catch some- SONIC LOOK OUT! It's poisonous! Catch a carp! Catch a goldfish! Catch a marlins! 
Catch a star post, which can hover off the ground. Catch Big the Cat doing a ventriloquist act. I was looking for fishing spots and wound up here. How does he do it? I suppose anything's possible when Sonic's looking so focused on your crotch. You use your purple coins to fish with Big, and doing so will net your tokens, which you can use to purchase different items. Upgrade materials, character tokens, rings, I have no idea why you'd use your tokens on these. But the most interesting purchase to be found here is the Egg Memos. These are little voice logs from Eggman, who's currently stuck in cyberspace, as we've seen. These little logs kind of clear up what's been going on with him in the meantime, and expands further on his relationship with Sage. Sage is Eggman's daughter. Okay, not really, but he does actually develop father-like feelings towards her the further the game progresses. Sage is actually Eggman's AI he created in order to unlock the secrets of the Ancients. Back in that first cutscene where Eggman's surrounded by the Triangle Troop, she's the one that pulls him into cyberspace in order to protect him. She's the classic trope of an AI slowly learning to love. Not in an oh my god Sonic is so sexy kind of way, more so like a want for her father's approval and a, a try to understand Sonic's links that he'll go to to save his friends kind of deal. Friends like Knuckles, who Sonic's definitely not casually banging on the side. Little interactions with Sage are found scattered all over the islands, just like with Sonic's friends, and the tokens are used here too. Although usually the cutscenes that ensue are generally all follow the same sort of structure. Sonic asks a question and Sage tells him to fuck off. We learn more about her intentions as the game progresses, but for now, I gotta wait till nighttime for this challenge. Is it weird that this game kind of reminds me of Nier Automata? Or Automata without it, the fuck you say it. that for just another thing I got a psych loop. Why even make this a night only thing? If I turned into a werehog at least then I would have got something sexy out of it, but the way it is now there's no point. This poor mother says she's lost her children. Can you eat the back here please? Sure thing. <gasps> Sonic Adventure 2 reference? This poor mother says she's lost her children. Can you lead them back here? Sure thing! That's really rude. Now here's a little something for all you guys out there who didn't think there was enough, you know, hurting in Sonic games. So occasionally the story will need you to complete a little mini game in order to progress. In this case it's herding the mother's children back to her and Amy. And I mean, uh, she must really, uh, you know, like, uh, Jesus, you get to your 20th kid and they just be kind of falling out. Of course a mini game like this doesn't provide much of a challenge, so in order to spice things up, the Cocos drop bombs every now and again. Went from mild to mild plus. I don't know where the hell the Emerald came from, but at least we finally get to see Sonic do a victory dance again. I think the last time that really happened was in Generations. Yeah, as long as it doesn't involve Bruno Mars, I'll take it. Now that Sonic's rolled those little terrorist stinkers back to their probably terrible mother, uh, two of them... ...die? And a light comes from within them and they slink up into the sky? Showing a strange symbol for a brief moment. You see this zap occasionally, you know, here and there on a computer, in a teaser trailer, on the roof of some floating pyramid. Sonic? What does the symbol represent? Why does it appear when Coco's bite the dust and Amy completes? The question started flying ever since that first trailer, so what's the deal? Well, nobody actually knows and the game never tells you, but hey, you can hook a seahorse by the scalp, so who cares? Man, Sonic Frontiers has everything! Lawn care! How many copies can I pre-order? In this minigame, it's all about, well, as I said before, lawn care. And to make it challenging, beads! Well, challenging might not be the right word, but by golly, they sure are there, and it's the thought that counts, isn't it? I know I've been making a lot of fun of the difficulty, and I get it, it's not meant to be a super hard game, but hey, there are actually some difficult segments here. She's like the Dark Souls of Sonic games. I... Who put this here? Who... Why? Why'd you add this? This is the only time something like this pops up. Why is it here? Did anybody enjoy this? Let me know if I was... If this was a genuinely fun experience for you. Who came out of this one and said, Oh shit, I hope that becomes a Sonic staple. Like, Green Hill. Soon enough people will be... Going, ah, in the trailers, because it's laser puzzle in Green Hill again. Don't get too far ahead. Maybe we should just let them wrap it up on their own. We have to see this through. We still haven't found Tails. We've been wrangling children and taking detours the whole way. 
Are you telling me you would leave behind someone in need? They're not in need, they're just trying to get some of that cool cussy. I'm so sorry. Uh, hello, Chaos 2? Chaos 3? Yeah, that's smash, probably. I'll be honest, the story here kind of intrigued me. Like, who were these guys? Why do they look so much like Chaos? What was their deal? Why do they, why do they, why do they do what they do? How are they living beings made out of liquid? We're 80% liquid, but we still look solid. What happened to them? That was also a question in the script. These were some of the questions floating around Monoggin throughout most of the game, and while most of these questions were answered with a fair amount of detail, some of them were just kind of slapped into a text box from Big's Fishing Adventure. Eggman talks about how the Ancients' DNA corroded until they became a completely different species. With the connection to Chaos they have, which as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong, is, or, well, was, a mutated Chow, did the Ancients evolve into... Uh, well, Chow? I'm actually quite happy that we finally got a Sonic game that expands upon previous stories rather than just adding shit like in most of the other recent games. There's more cool lore stuff in here, but let's not explode our load all at once, huh? Why don't we save that for when Sonic and friends figure it all out? Uh, wasn't this region locked off before? I think you can interact with it now. I think you can rotate some of them. I think Amy needs to structure her sentences better. I think. I need to stop complaining. It's finally time to check out the first boss fight. Sonic races up to the waterfall and leaps off of the spring. No, he doesn't. He falls back down. Did they try to make this cutscene look more epic by adding black bars, but instead of just adding black bars, they squished the screen? Well, that doesn't look right. But neither does this. What's going on here? There we go. I, this might be the weirdest issue we've had so far. It, it, not because it's funny or breaks the game, but the fact that it just exists. And how does this happen? I, I, I don't know. I'm not mad. I just check it out. It's Gigantoe. Thankfully, even though Sonic couldn't find the seventh Chaos Emerald, he just kind of said, ah, "It'll turn up, right?" Well, lucky him. Gigantoe's wearing the world's most powerful hat. Sonic cannot match Gigantoe's power yet. Reach Gigantoe's head to transform into Super Sonic. Oh, good thing this text box was here, because you sure as hell can't see the Chaos Emerald in the cutscene. They had the perfect opportunity, and it's just not there. Even in the zoomed out shot. Guess we're always going to be relying on text boxes for important information. Dear Sonic Team, that was pretty freaking cool. What a slap to the face. I got a good one, mind you. This shit kicks ass. Sure, it might be a little janky here and there, but damn, this has got to be the best Super Sonic boss fight since, well, ever, I think. Let's see, we got uh, uh, Sonic 3, Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes, Sonic 06, ah, uh, Sonic Unleashed. Uh, I mean, that one was interesting, but it's not like Super Sonic was a joy to control or anything. Oh, there's Sonic Generations. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that statement. While the other games might have had the Super Sonic boss fight take place in a cooler area, I don't really think any of the fights were particularly that engaging or all that challenging, to be honest. You just kind of steer Sonic where he needs to go and usually ram your head against the boss a few times to kill it. Here, you're punching and kicking the shit out of this guy and it actually feels impactful. I, not to mention, for one, Super Sonic has the same basic hit as regular Sonic, or at least his combat moves, and what you've learned so far can actually be applied here. Unlike the other Super Sonic boss fights, I... Huh? Shit, I forgot I suck. Hell, all we need now is to get rid of the stupid ass quick time event and we're all set! These things can work well if you know how to do them right, but uh, yeah, this kind of sucks. Once Sonic's given the Titan what I can only describe as a bit of haphazard heart surgery, the voice from the sky tells him he's not quite done yet and there are more Titans to kill. Amy comes over. <laughs> Is they're running animation. And that's it! We've made it through the first island! Holy shit, there's five! I'll be honest, when I first saw this game, I figured there was only gonna be one island. They would just slap all the content in there, with the little there would be, and uh, that would kind of be it. It would just be a short, buggy, shitty experience. Heck, I wasn't even going to do a review on this game. If I hadn't decided to do a review, basically on a whim, 
well, then that would have just been it. For me, and I'm sure a lot of others too, Sega's recent Sonic games were reason enough to warrant all the pessimism and negativity. It didn't come out of nowhere, it was earned. The two hour long mess that was Forces, the buggy and unfinished Colors Ultimate, that just proved to me that they didn't give a shit anymore. Thankfully, giving a shit is what this game seems to be doing, at least so far. It's not a huge shit, mind you, but I can tell that there are some people here who actually care about the product they're selling me. Keep it up, and I'll, I'll, uh, uh, I'll stop talking about Sonic Forces! Yeah, I'm sick of it too. Sonic flies off to the next island, accompanied by what is definitely not Mario music. But Radical Soda, Sonic still has the Chaos Emeralds! Does this mean we can utilize them in gameplay? The shit, I clicked my uh, button and now the script is somewhere random, oh fuck. But Radical Soda, Sonic still has the Chaos Emeralds! Does this mean we can utilize them in the regular gameplay like the good old days? Of course not, you idiot, that would be fun! I get it, I get it, it'd be pretty silly for Sonic to still have the Chaos Emeralds for each new level, I mean... All they'd have to do is free his friend and then kill the Titan, make it for a pretty short game. So the way they got around this is by having Sonic blasted out of the sky by an anti-Chaos Emerald Ray or some shit. I don't know how they explain it. And now you gotta collect them again. Well, I don't need them anyway. It's not like the game is actually difficult. My controller died. There we go. Don't worry about it. Controller's turning off. Sometimes these things happen. One in a million, though. There's always a chance. Sonic Team, for the love of God, please fix the homing attack in the next game, I can only take so much. This island's pretty much the same as the last one with a new cone of paint, you run around, kill enemies, complete those stupid little challenges, except this time you gotta fall through all the squares! And of course, collect the necessary tokens to further progress the story, in this case, the war medal looking things. Who are these for, I'm sure you're asking? The, the question burning away in the back of your mind, who the hell in the Sonic universe was a war general? There's a couple of new mini-boss fights here too, like Shark, which has you uh, uh, hold the stick in the direction it tells you, right? Well, at least somebody's enjoying it. Here's another one, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> Boy, this one's tough. Ah, I see, I was, I was doing it wrong, I, I got it now. What a, what a challenge this is. Is it... Challenge not to fall asleep. Here's an neat one, sumo. This shit's great. Um, uh, you, um, what else can I say? Uh, uh, it's fun. It's fun. This is why I only review bad games. When I when I play good games, I can only squeeze out ten minutes of material. And I think there's only one other mini boss here. That being Tank, which they really should have called Crab. Missed opportunity there. This one's neat too. You've got to time your homing attacks to avoid getting hit. I like it. Kind of. And while we're on a winning streak here, why don't we bring a little excitement to the table with another cyberspace level, huh? What do we got this time? Hey, look at that! My favorite two things, Green Hill and 2.5D! Woo! Look, 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 guys, look. Sonic Team made the last Green Hill stage and said, well, guys, hey, so we kind of reused all the Green Hill 3D segments from Sonic Generations, and that was lazy of us, all right? We can admit that. But we've got a slammer of an idea. How about this time, we reuse the 2D segments instead? Don't go to all this trouble, Sega. If you want me to kill myself, all you have to do is ask. And for the love of all that is crispy and crunchy, Sonic Team, chuck that boost filter in the trash. The music goes from sounding like a generic song which doesn't really fit the stage to a big-ass blowout butt synthesizer. I feel like I should also point out in a less uh, jokey way here that even if this level design wasn't coming straight out of Generations, it still wouldn't be a good fit for a Frontiers level. Sonic runs slower in 2.5D like he did in Lost World, I'm assuming they slowed him down so you can see what's coming up ahead, but it just kind of turns the fast and fun first level from Generations and makes it, well, boring. It's not even difficult to get an S rank, just kind of keep running forward and you'll pretty much always get it. I get that that was kind of an issue with Generations 2, but the first couple of cyberspace levels here really did make me think they were going to be more of a challenge. I can understand making the levels a little on the easier side for the younger fans, even if the majority of the cyberspace levels are optional, but isn't making the S rank difficult to get kind of the point then? To give the older players something to aim for, or the more skilled kids even? Getting the S rank on the second stage for me was kind of rewarding. I'd love to see more challenges like that without them. Uh, yeah, the levels just feel kind of boring, I'm sorry. Well, I'll still take it over Forces level design anyway. <laughs> Has anyone seen that joke yet? Anyone? You know, pretty funny stuff, huh? No? Hey, look at Attack Doodad! Hey, come back here, you little scamp! I... Oh, 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 oh! oh. Yeah. Didn't expect a first person mode. Hey, that's pretty neat. Sonic Frontier! Sonic Frontier! It will defy the next gen! Yeah, what's going on here? Starfall. 
Once every few nights, meteors will fall like rain. When this happens, item and enemies in the open field will be resurrected. Oh, so it's the Blood Moon from Zelda! This game continues to impress with its ingenuity and originality. Don't worry though, guys, it's not the exact same. This one's got a slot machine. Gambling always makes everything better. Okay, I get around, of course. I, I actually love slot machines and the stuff like this, assuming it doesn't involve actual real money. For a select period of time, which happens you know, once every few nights, you can run around and collect fallen star pieces to use as currency with the chance of getting rewards. I don't know what the exchange rate is, but it can't be great if these things literally fall from the sky. And the prizes from the slot machine, yeah, well, you can get things like a big fishing tokens. Yep, that's it. Unfortunately, once the sun rises, it doesn't matter how many extra star pieces you've grabbed, the slot machine's done. So do yourself a favor and don't spend the whole night collecting them. You can only get through so many. As I mentioned before, the friend to rescue on this video game, Desert Island number 6048, is Knuckles. Knuckles? What are you doing here? Well, if you want that answered, Sonic, you better check out the Sonic Frontiers animated short film prologue, Divergence. Ooh. Angel Island. My home. I don't want to be that guy, but wasn't Angel Island a heck of a lot bigger? Joke on a sign, this animation's actually really well done. I dare say it's got way better presentation than the game itself. It stars Knuckles, obviously, exploring Angel Island when he discovers one of the cyberspace level portal things. He gets teleported inside and out to... Well, it's a little vague, but I'm assuming it's in the Starfall Island somewhere, because there's Sage looking kind of bored, and a zip zop zoobity bop he's trapped in a red sphere. I mean, it could be cyberspace, but I, I don't think the origami guys actually ever appear in cyberspace, so I, I don't know, somebody else figure it out. I don't want to dedicate any more brain power to this. I originally skipped this animation. I, I only actually watched it once I started writing the script, and, uh, well, I think it was worth watching, is all I'll say. It cleared up a couple of, uh, let's say, suspicions I had. I, I think it would have been great to include it in the game somewhere, though, maybe like the egg memos, you know? Knuckles memo re Heck, if they're not going to do any big budget CG cutscenes for in the game, rather uh, uh, keep them for advertising purposes, still not a fan of that, then maybe in the future, 2D cutscenes are the way to go. Hey, Sonic Riders had a kick-ass opening cutscene, something like that, it'd be great. While I'm still on the topic of multimedia bits of story not included in the game itself, there's also a prequel comic, and uh, yeah, this one's not that important, all things considered. It's got a neat little joke where it turns out Sonic and friends have been fighting a decoy Eggman which kept spouting lines from older Sonic games, but I think this would have worked way better as the opening cutscene, especially since the main joke here is, you know, a voice line based. Would have also been really great to hear Mike Pollock spouting out some of these adventure lines. For me, it kind of feels like a budgeting cutback or some time constraints, you know, that sort of deal, like they couldn't afford to add it as an actual opening cutscene. Here's hoping with the success of Frontiers, again, they really give it their all in the next game. And I can say that with a bit of hope this time, because we didn't get another one of these. So Knuckles is trapped in the red sphere as a digitized version of himself, but Sonic's not worried because he's got the war medals to break him out. Because the first thing you think of when someone says Knuckles is his purple heart. What the hell is going on here? Looks like he's been stung by a bee. And he's into it. What follows is by far the strangest interaction I think I've ever seen. Knuckles is immediately at Sonic's throat, although he sounds kind of depressed at the same time. Some rescue. I'm still half ghost. I'm working on it, okay? What's going on with you? Uh, I think this line was meant for when Knuckles maybe sees the corruption Sonic's got due to absorbing the red spheres, but he, he doesn't actually see any of it, so this cutscene is just... It's all over the place, man. Did the storyboards get scrambled or something? Does, does Knuckles always punch Sonic's hands? And then they do this, I... What's going on, man? Hey, check it out! A cyberspace level that doesn't just reuse Generations level design. Now they're reusing Unleashed level design! What a time to be alive! I guarantee you I was holding back on the stick there. This jump is shittier than Scatfest 2020. It's fine, it's fine, I'll just be more careful. What's really weird about this game is that Sonic has, like, no iframes. In other video games, and especially other Sonic games, after your character gets hit, there's a few short seconds where they'll flash, and this means you're invulnerable for a short while so you can get your bearings. Here, though, they said no! We don't want Sonic to flash the children! No more iframes for you, bitch! Despite these issues, this level was actually pretty fun. Not if played the intended way, of course, unless boosting over all the obstacles is intended, which it very well may be, who knows. But these levels where you're given the opportunity to do so are quickly becoming my favorites. It's like if you took these really small segments where you could, like, boost fly-in forces and actually made it into a feature. I like it! 
The jump might suck a uh, big sweaty penis, but being able to boost in whatever direction you want is great. And when you finally get that perfect run, it feels amazing. No! I don't have a smooth segue into this, but uh, you can't homing attack springs on rails. Kind of annoying sometimes, especially since you can't reliably land on them with the stiff mid-air controls. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out. This specifically needs to be changed ASAP. I think it's probably the most glaring issue in the game. So John Sega, if you could just get on that. Here's another fantastic Green Hill 2.5D level. This one is... <laughs> as far as I'm aware, this level's based on the classic Green Hill stage from Generations. It's a little hard to tell when everything looks like it's ripped from Generations, but... I prefer to think of it as taking inspiration from Sonic 06. What, did you not see me get the glue shoe upgrade? Did I not mention that's right there on the skill tree? This one's also pretty easy to S rank, you know, just keep moving forward and utilize the air boost. While we're on the subject of cyberspace stages, there were a few I missed in the first island. Here's one based on what seems to be City Escape from SA2, and hey, look at that! Game's finally teaching me how to do the light speed dash. Wow, you're only a bit late there, guys. This level's ridiculously easy, not just to complete, but also to finish all the missions. I got all four on my first attempt without really trying. I would say I'm bragging, but a blind dog with opposable thumbs could probably do it. Check it out, I died in the overworld and the game was like, hey, have you tried jumping? And while I'm mentioning dying in the overworld, hey, take a look at this. Sonic's actually got a falling animation in this game. In other video game franchises, this would just be a given, but not for us Sonic fans, we've got something to compare it to! I should probably explain why I'm back at the first area, and no, it's not just to add more watch time. When I realized I hadn't completed all the cyberspace stages on the first island, I went back so I could get a good understanding of all of them, but I thought, hey, in that case, why not just do everything? That way I've experienced everything the game has to offer. And this includes all the little challenges and extra optional character cutscenes too. Honestly, I don't feel that different since you helped clear my mind. I guess it feels kind of... Hmm. Detached? I'm feeling kind of detached. So yeah, I actually ended up 100%ing the game, Platinum Trophy and all. And I'll tell you this, it's not too bad to complete. I dare even say it's kind of... fun? Finding the little cutscenes scattered all over are a neat little reward for your efforts, and obviously doing all the missions in the cyberspace levels can be fun. Completing all the challenges over the map, less so, but it's not a big deal. Uh, completing all of them on an island will get you fast travel to any portal. <laughs> Miracle Soda, you're already traveling fast. <laughs> I think the most annoying thing with 100% completion was the use Phantom Rush move 50 times PlayStation trophy. And thankfully, you can just slap the spring enemy over and over again in order to get it, but it still wasn't, you know, fun. I, I was never a fan of trophies or Steam achievements. I, I don't know what Xbox has, but I'm sure I'm not a fan of those either. But yeah, this just felt like a padding trophy. No reason for it to be in the game other than to artificially increase the game time. The only reason I got the Platinum Trophy is so no one can call me out by saying I'm bad at the game. You're talking to the guy who 100 percent at both Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog, A-Ranks and all. I know what I'm talking about here. Also 100 percent at Sonic 3 Knuckles. Uh, Sonic Colors. Sonic Unleashed for the PS2. Sonic Riders. Shrek 2. Unfortunately, 100%ing the game doesn't get you anything. I didn't expect much, uh, but I was still disappointed. Uh, it would have taken a texture swap for Sonic shoes, like anything, please. You might be wondering why I'm beginning so many sentences in this review with you might be wondering. But you also might be wondering why I'm talking about 100% completion before I've even gotten halfway through the second island. It's because I don't want to talk about Chemical Plant! Why is it back for the 15 millionth time? Why do you insist on using the same three level themes over and over? And why is it just the Generations level design again? To experience Sonic like never before, I could sue you for false advertising! And just like Green Hill, Chemical Plant here is just the 3D segments from Generations all slapped together to make a one minute long level, so eventually, I'm sure will stumble across the abhorrent 2D segment somewhere down the line as well. Won't that be fun? So, so far we've got Green Hill, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary, and the new city level. Hang on a minute, that's just Budget Speed Highway! That's it, I, I can't, I can't even uh, think about this anymore. Let's talk about something else. How about these great, great enemies you can only kill by using the cyclo, but the ground is kind of bumpy so the cyclo doesn't work. I need a therapist! Look out, everybody! There's a, a snake with hands! It's just Sonic, what, what are you... <laughs> Sage proceeds to influence the Titan with her cyber powers like she did with Giganto before. I can't remember if it's actually mentioned in the main story or not, but you can't fully control the giant ancient robots, rather just kind of point them in Sonic's direction with some intrusive thoughts. Dude, much like my intrusive thoughts! Kill, 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 kill. Talk about the boss segment. Oh, 
Oh, the boss segment. Go, Sonic, go! This is the only, uh, uh how do I put it? The, uh, only on rail segment? I mean, there's that squid mini boss, but, uh... As much as I'd love to say this was a pulse-pounding, high-octane experience, it's still set in the open world. Uh, so shit gets kind of muddled on where you can and can't go. Oh man, my bad. I, I should have known there was an invisible wall where it looks like I could go. I think the funniest moment of all this is that in the cutscene, Sonic's meant to jump out of the way of one of the missiles, but either they messed up the timing or the cutscene's just a bit jank here. <laughs> He's dead! Finally! Holy cow, another of these? There has to be a reason these light up. Okay, how on earth am I supposed to use this thing? Oh, training simulator. Ah, okay. What is going on here? How's he doing this? Okay, listen, I swear I'm not stupid, but this section took me a lot longer than it should have. First, I try and throw the bomb at the chain. Doesn't really work. So, I talk to Knuckles, and through the power of a uh, uh, brain blast, he and Sonic decide jostling the device holding the chain is the best course of action for draining the water here. So, I bring the bomb over to the obviously marked cannon of some sort and shoot at the chain. But that's not the device holding the chain, you silly billy! What an idiot! Hey, that's you you're talking about. Holy cow. So, I run back, get another bomb, become distracted by Sonic's latent psychic powers. <laughs> Go back, get another bomb, this time shoot it at a random wall for some reason. Go back, get another bomb, shoot it at the wall behind the chain. Go back, get another bomb, start lining it up to the device above the chain. Yes, no! Go back, get another bomb. You know, at one point I actually did shoot the right place, I was just, uh... Yeah, two centimeters too far to the left. Yeah, the diamond shape there apparently is the place you're meant to shoot. And I mean, I can see it now, it kind of looks like a target, but when you're kind of just looking at it from, you know, as a big object, it just seems like part of the design. I went through so many bombs, I developed a speedrun strategy so I could get as far as possible without having to be slowed down when I'm carrying it. Well, here's an excitement space stage. Let's see if we can guess what it's based off. Uh, uh, uh green forest. Uh, uh, no, uh, hang castle. Hi. Oh, 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 oh. Chemical plant. This is just yet another generic stage that blends in with all the others. Don't get me wrong, they're better designed than the Forces stages, as I've said before, but that's not really much of a compliment. Uh, you can rip the level design from City Escape as much as you like, but without the truck or the... It's got nothing interesting to remember. Sonic's levels have always been memorable for two distinct reasons, at least in my mind. One, the level's theme. Where does the level take place? What sort of obstacles and unique elements does the theme bring in terms of gameplay? For example, uh, let's think of a level from a 3D Sonic game. How about Ocean Palace from Sonic Heroes? It's a city of ancient ruins on the sea. Therefore, there's falling blocks, doors that need to be broken open, and turtle platforming, and to top it off, a segment where giant rolling rocks chase you, like some sort of ancient booby trap. All of these additions that you can only find here are important because it makes the level stand out in its own way. You've seen Sonic do an automated loop so many times you need to mix it up, or else there's no point in zooming out and pretending it's a huge spectacle. Why should I care about these loops in the 15th version of Chemical Plant? There's no multiple paths, there's no rocks chasing me, there's no gap in the loop. What's there to make it interesting? Nothing. It's boring. I mentioned the truck before, and that's a segment that only really works in City Escape. It's a big standout point of the level. You know, cars are flying everywhere, the music changes. It's easily remembered so many years later because it's interesting, even if it's not very mechanically intense. A Sonic level needs these distinctions, I feel, or else it just starts to blend in with the other levels. Classic Sonic levels are great at this, even in the shitty Sonic 1 levels. Each one brings a distinct gimmick, or, you know, doodad for you to do. Green Hill has the breakable tunnels, you know, it's the first level, so it's not that complicated. Marble Zone's got the stupid moving block shit and the lava. Labyrinth, the underwater stuff. Starlight, the seesaws and the fans and shit. You get what I'm saying? These cyberspace levels, as fun as they can be, mainly the speedrun, don't have much in the way of memorable set pieces, and the ones they do have, like the spinning platforms in that one Sky Sanctuary stage, are taken from somewhere else, in this case Unleashed Dragon Road Day stage. Even... <sighs> even forces at least attempted to do little segments like this in their levels, even if they were usually just quick time events. This is how you do it wrong, sure, but boy they sure were memorable. And number two of things all Sonic levels need to do well is the music. Sonic's always had great music, 
usually. And while I have been hearing chatter about how people seem to really like the cyberspace stage themes, as I said before, each one is so similar to the next, they all just kind of blend in with each other and they just don't suit them. Well, maybe the suit a cyberspace stage, but these aren't really cyberspace stages. They're Green Hill, Chemical Plant, and Sky Sanctuary stages, and sometimes the Speed Highway during the day is there too. If you played me one of these cyberspace themes nine times out of ten, I wouldn't be able to tell you which theme went with which level, the tenth time being the, the 1-2 level, because I had to replay it so many times. Like, like, listen to this. What level was that from? I don't know. Well, I do because I had to make the damn video, but I'll quickly forget. Look, here's another bit of the song. And that was a lie. That's actually a completely different track. But you see where I'm going with this? Even if you think the music sounds good, it doesn't mean it fits the stage or is memorable. Not that the stages have much of anything to draw inspiration from anyway, so... I mean, I kind of get it. Now, take your, take your ear and listen to this. Ooh, what's that? Sounds a bit spooky. A little haunted. Scary level. Yeah. Mystic Mansion. How about that? And how about this? Oh, ho, a, a beautiful melody with bits of a bits of spunky rock in there. Whatever could this be alluding to? Maybe some sort of natural wonderland taken over by something. I don't know. Uh, how about this one? Oh my goodness, that sounds like some sort of a, a, a digital landscape. I, uh, maybe you could even go so far to say it's like a, uh, some sort of cyberspace. As much as I appreciate the return of full 3D stages for at least, I don't know, maybe half of the levels. Again, I don't know because they're so freaking forgettable. That's, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, even Sonic 06 had more memorable levels, you know. That tornado's carrying a car. Let's talk about something else, huh? How about a... Uh... No! Sonic has decided that he's gonna be a little bit of a stickler for how flat the ground is. What does that mean? It means that if you're boosting and try to jump on any ground that's even slightly lumpy, he just uh, won't. Needless to say, it do be kind of frustrating to keep having to turn around because your jump just kind of went flat. I don't know how this problem made it into the game for something so based around speed and platforming. Please, can we get this fixed? That'd be nice. It'd be too late because, you know, I already 100%ed it, but for the mentally insane who like to replay the game, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Here's another one of those weird little mini games. Um, in this one, you've got to collect the Cocos from underneath these stomping towers. I don't know how they're not being crushed, but hey, I'm not going to question it. This shit's funny. Sonic and the towers both speed up based on how many Cocos you're carting around, but apparently I can't read, so I didn't figure that out until I failed it a couple of times. Sonic and Knuckles have a blast to the past, much like Sonic. Sonny? Who the fuck is Sonny? Much like Sonic and Amy did previously, although this time instead of two lovers joining together, we have death. And then the zap thing appears in the sky again. What does it mean? Mm. Here's an ex-cyberspace stage, and it really does show off one of the major problems in this game. And no, it's not that it's based on Sky Rail from Sonic Adventure 2. You know, if you had more stages that had been based on the older ones instead of ripping off generations, you might actually had something here. Aside from Sonic's really horribly controlling jump, uh, the only other really big issue is the way they treat boosting, and I guess stomping. I actually decided for this level because I was having fun. Uh, wow, look at that! It's almost like the Sonic Adventure 2 level suits its gameplay better than the Generations ones! That I'd try and get the best time I could. But for some reason, even though it seemed like the game wanted me to, if you boost in the air and then homing attack a spring, you can't boost again until you hit the ground. In this clip here, I thought I'd just fat fingered or something and restarted the level. Little did I know! Here's another good example. Hit a spring, boost, hit another couple of springs, and then it just looks like I gave up! It's a really frustrating mechanic, and I really hope they change it. Speedrunning these levels would be way more fun if your boost just reset once you've hit a spring or something. Other than that minor stumble, the, the level here is pretty fun to speedrun. And there's a ton of different paths to take. I ended up spending 35 minutes here just non-stop trying to get a good time. At the time I eventually ended up with was about 1.30, but I had a bit of time by about 12 seconds and- ah! You know what, it's kind of neat how each enemy has its own special way of defeating it, that's pretty cool. I think this one requires you to finish coding the game. I don't care if you're afraid, those are your people out there. <coughs> Knuckles, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but I ain't sticking my neck out for just another white guy. Hey coach, what's with the pep talk? Mm.
Not with the defenses down. Have you ever felt like something was missing from your life? You ever wished you could hurt little clay men more than once without having to reset your Sonic Frontiers save file? What do you mean, no? I, I appreciate the callback to Sonic 3. In, in fact, there's been a ton of callbacks so far, and, you know, as someone who's been through all of Sonic's journeys, it finally feels nice to have the, you know, characters actually mention them. Heck, uh, Eggman even mentions the Black Arms at one point on his podcast, but uh, this looks a little jarring, you gotta admit. It couldn't have remade the scene in 3D, maybe? Oh, I get it. I know why they didn't do that, because Generations didn't have an Angel Island in it, so you couldn't rip the assets, right? Knuckles mentions the ruins here look similar to the ones on Angel Island, and I thought the rocks in the background were just meant to be the ground's pattern here, or, or is he talking about, like, other areas, like Sky Sanctuary or Hidden Palace? If that was the case, though, they would have shown those areas, right? Right? They're going to assault the bunker! I can't... I can't lose this! What? Why'd they bring that up again? Did Knuckles have some sort of bunker on Angel Island we didn't know about? Could they not have shown us that? Maybe the island going up in flames? I don't think him standing there chuckling really sells the mood they're going for here. Another minigame! Or a, a more so an arena fight. Take down the towers before the time runs out? No problem! Man, I've already used up half my time and I've only killed one. What kind of crap is this? Sorry about the bunker, Knuckles. I guess you'll have to chuckle elsewhere. Oh my god, you can run up the towers? All my training. And I forgot. It was all for nothing. After that's dealt with, the Cocos all line up, Sonic and Knuckles give the salute, and they off themselves like some sort of cult. Jesus Christ. Here's the next cyberspace level, and yep, it sure is Sky Sanctuary. You know what would have been cool? Instead of ripping the assets from the first three generation stages, rip the assets from other Sonic games, huh? This is cyberspace, right? It actually makes sense if everything was all low poly, like, you know, rip Grand Metropolis from Sonic Heroes, robots and all. That'd be cool to see. Obviously, changing the level design would be needed. Not that they've been doing that. But you've got all the assets right there, right? Like, and I always love to hear remixes of all the themes as long as it's not Green Hill. Imagine a cyberspace level of Middle Harbor or Frog Forest or Westopolis. Sonic says later on that the cyberspace stages are being pulled from his memories, but I'm pretty sure he's been to more places than Green Hill Chemical Plant Sky Sanctuary! It'd also be cool to hear Sonic's thoughts throughout stages like these. Ever since Unleashed, he's always been silent in stages other than the occasional grunt, you know? But what does he think about revisiting Egg Fleet? Uh, what's he got to say about Final Haunt? Heck, chuck it an 06 level like Radical Train and he could say, what the fuck? Where am I? Don't get me wrong, I'd always prefer new levels, but uh, I know that budgeting and, you know, time management have to be accounted for, which is why I'd even bring up uh, or suggest something like this in the first place. Heck, if they're ever gonna go in that direction, why not go the full mile and change Sonic's model to suit the game he was in at the time? That's the kind of nostalgia you can still get me excited for, Sega. Just quit it with the Green Hill and shit. Let me know what you think about my fantastic idea. Is it good? Is it great? Pick one of those two answers and put it down in the comments below. Well, I guess I owe Sega and Sonic Team an apology. I haven't experienced Sonic like this before. And they never said it would be a good experience either, so I'm shit out of luck, I guess. I suppose I should mention, you know, at some point that Knuckles has gotten a new voice actor. Dave B. Mitchell is the new voice of Knuckles and has been since Team Sonic Racing. He does a pretty good job. At least in the Frontiers prologue animation and Team Sonic Racing, but from what I can remember in that game anyway. Honestly though, I think Frontiers really suffers from super weird voice direction and, and sometimes odd writing choices, like I already mentioned Amy's weird lines and personality and I, a few of Sonic and Knuckles, but there's been a lot more I've been cutting out because I don't want to just shit all over the cutscenes non-stop. Like, Knuckles says at one point something like, Maybe I could, but first I need to be back to normal. So hurry up and get me back to normal. 
I don't know, I honestly think the animation and the dialogue just don't fit each other sometimes. It doesn't help that the models are still the Forces ones. I, I see a lot of people say Sonic and Friends designs are perfect right now and all they need is some more expressive animation. I couldn't disagree more. These models look so bloody awkward. It, it, Sonic looks like an alien half the time. Don't even get me started on Amy. Knuckles' hands are the size of his head. Like, I, I, they need to be redesigned and remodeled. I'm not talking about Sonic Boom levels of redesign here. More like a stylization choice. You know, or just make a Sonic that doesn't look brain dead while he's standing still. Holy cow. Wyvern! That's right, everybody. It's time to finish off the desert island and kick some booty or lack thereof. Thankfully, even though the wyvern's up in the sky, we've got a 3 FPS path... 3 FPS path to follow. Mm-mm. <laughs> oh, girl, stop. <laughs> we've got a 3 FPS path to follow. They must have been taking notes from Pokemon. That was the joke that was intended there. The, 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 the reference to Pokemon's low FPS because that game's... A, 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 their games are nightmares. <laughs> This boss fight's on an on-rails sort of deal, something similar to the Time Eater, I guess you could say, but unlike the Time Eater, we've got some great tunes of blast in here! Once you've got the Wyvern a half health, that flips into a second uh, a part of the song, and holy shit! Even if looking back, it's not the most mechanically intense boss fight, and I'd probably say the first one was still more fun. This is the spectacle that Sonic needs, this right here! If we could get more fights like this in the next Sonic game, maybe with less waiting and more control over hitting the boss, I guess what I'm saying is make Sonic Dark Souls, you can sign me right up! So far, this is what my enjoyment has been like over the course of the game so far. The huge peaks of the Sonic boss fights, obviously. Uh, that dip there was learning the cyberspace levels are all stuck being Green Hill and shit. The boss fight ends with another quick time segment, which of course is extremely easy, apart from when you accidentally press R1 in the middle of mashing and the game says, Hey, that wasn't square, you retard! Also, holy shit, they reference Super Knuckles, which means it's canon, Sega. You better let us play as Super Knuckles, dude. I mean it. Sonic flies off to the next island, and of course, as you'd expect, you can't keep the emerald, so he gets blasted out of the sky again. Although I do appreciate how you can clearly see him trying to avoid the lasers. He remembered! He still failed, yes, but hey, he tried, and that's all I can ask. Good job, Sonic, you did your best. In this third island, you gotta play Tetris, but that's looking like it's given Sonic a headache, so let's head back to the second island for that 100% completion, as well as those extra cyberspace levels I missed. Hmm. Maybe you're still thinking about Tetris. Well, that's the last of the learnable skills. That is, of course, counting the auto battle skill, where Sonic automatically uses combo moves without you actually needing to press them at the cost of damage. You need to turn it off in the options menu of all places. A toggle on the skill tree, would that, would that have been too hard to add in there? Unfortunately, this means from now on the skill points are effectively useless, so uh, half the game's rewards well, aren't really rewards anymore. It's really unfortunate. They could have at least changed them into rings, or maybe, like, you could have been allowed to convert the extra skill points into attack and defense fruit, or cocos, or maybe cosmetic choices, like, you know, little extra cheats, you know, a big head mode, something like that, from the old days. As it is now, when you find a secret stash of skill points, you feel like you just wasted your time. And enemies aren't even worth killing anymore, because all they give you is more skill points. That sounded so fake! That sounded like the fakest sentence I've ever said! I think I ended the game with the number maxed out, and it's not a huge deal or anything. I just wish that they would have thought about how it would have affected the gameplay. And now enemies are rather more of a bother than something you'd want to fight, much like the cyberspace stages. Speaking of that, here's the next cyberspace level and... It's amazing how quickly they've managed to make me go from liking Chemical Plant to absolutely despising it. What's cool about this level is that they forgot to put the button prompt on the launches. It's a surprise every time! I don't know what I did to trigger this bug, but ever since entering this level it basically affected every launcher from here on out. Very rarely it'll show me the prompt, but most of the time it's just a weird blur. Thankfully I know it's square for horizontal movement and X for vertical, but if newer players ran into this they would have been pretty confused. Anyway, this level's pretty bland and forgettable. Even going through the footage again, nothing really brings a bell. This chemical plant level, staring at it from afar. Have I played it before? Don't mind me, just collecting rings for the speed boost. Have, have I mentioned that yet? I must have mentioned it at this point. Like, hang on. I still don't know. Just in case, I'll let you know. Uh, once you collect Sonic's Kappa rings, starting off at 400, although you can upgrade it later, uh, Sonic's maximum speed is increased. I just hit the mic. It shows a, a quite frankly, kind of spooky cutscene. Uh, imagine this being outside your window at night. And then BLAM! Off you go at top speed. If you get hit or lose rings, you'll be back to regular speed, so it does reward you for keeping them. Once you max out your ring upgrades, or it could be a mix between that and your speed upgrades, I'm not sure. I did the Delta shit all at once for the ring stuff. Sonic will always have his max speed enabled, rings or no rings, I, I, I think. Or is it still 400? Why can't I remember? 
No wonder I like the Shadow the Hedgehog game so much, I can relate to the main character. Now the cyberspace level here, at least this one's 3D. Oh, damn it. You know what you were doing there, Frontiers. Don't start the stage off like that and get my hopes up. I think the only really surprising thing about this level is the fact that it exists at all. Uh, this one was really forgettable. Extremely easy, doesn't do anything new, bland level design that works. And I only just thought of this now, but if you're a Sonic Frontiers fan and you're getting frustrated that I'm not mentioning each stage's music, it's because they go in one ear and out the other. I have nothing to say. Well, now that we're done with the second island, it's on to the third! What new content does it have in store for us? Why spiders, of course! Why Amy Rose, of course! You circle its legs until it flings you into the air where you gotta dodge the conveniently placed spike balls floating around and get back to the ground so you can kick its booty. This one honestly kinda sucks. But hey, one bad mini boss out of like 10 so far, it ain't too bad. Cyberspace level and it's 3D, everybody! Woo! And because they've already ripped off Skyrail, why not throw in a poor man's green forest too, huh? I think this one clip of a supposedly simple platformy section really shows off how wonky the jumping is in this game. Like, I'm a decently skilled player, everybody. This is not me purposely trying to make the game look bad. Even the developers realized what a challenge this was with the controls they gave us, so they just slapped the spring at the bottom so you could just skip it. Then again, this spring could be there in the original, but I, I don't think so. Is it? Shit, I'm not gonna check. I ain't playing Sonic Adventure 2 again. Like, as much as you can enjoy these little stages, you gotta admit, sometimes things feel a little off. It's also kind of sad to see the interesting geometry and design of the original level being baked down to a simple stock standard style. Did I say stimple? No? I don't think I did. The floating platforms all being the same square shape and the vine bungee jump now just being a shitty ass grabby thing. Remember Green Forest center the level segment where the ground is shaken and you gotta race to the end? Now it's this! <laughs> so you might be wondering, I, I said it again, what's the deal with this island, huh? What separates it from the other islands? Well, you see, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, they made this one the 2.5D island, where anything you do leads into a 2.5D segment. I said it was interesting, I didn't say it was fun. I'm not kidding around! Hit a spring, hit a boost pad, sneeze kind of funny, and bam, you're slapped into a 2.5D segment. Try to get out of it, I dare you! What's the point of having a big old open world exploration adventure if all you can do is go left and right, huh? Ah, it's a bit frustrating because the other levels seem to balance them out between 3D and 2.5D, but I, I, I don't know, maybe this was the point where they started running out of time and 2.5D sections were just easier to make? Speaking of being easier to make, I... No, that's not a good segue. Tails is stuck in the red orb this time around, and using the power of glowing yellow wrenches, he's broken free. This whole cyber corruption Sonic's got going for him is an interesting plot point, and while I was interested to see where they go with it, it would have been nice to see it actually being shown on the in-game model instead of only in the cutscenes. Have I already talked about this? No. No, I haven't. I definitely haven't. It's clear Sonic's really struggling, and, and while I know it would have taken a lot of time to reanimate all of his moves to make it look like he has to really focus to give it his all in order to simply maneuver around like he used to, uh, the moving textures on him could have been a much simpler way to convey it and uh, remind the audience, you know, what he's going through. As it is now, it just kind of looks like he drank too much the night before. Well, at least with all of Sonic's moves, finishing the stage should be a piece of cake. Here's one of his final moves, that being uh, used by pressing R2 or boost and then the jump button. Boy, I bet this doesn't bite me in the ass later. Oh, here we go! Here it is biting me in the ass. Boy, that was quick. You almost had it, Sonic Team! You put the homing attack and the double jump on different buttons like champs, and then you go and pull this shit. Here's the next mini-boss, a flying fortress. Uh, you gotta stay on the blue rails in order to catch up to it. <coughs> okay, okay, cyberspace stage. We got a... got a... Do you really want me to do the joke about how they're reusing old generations level design again? I can't believe that I got sick of doing the joke before they got sick of reusing the old levels! I get that it's not the same gameplay style, but that doesn't really matter, does it? This is just freaking lazy, and again, I understand these time constraints and budgets and overworked developers who quite frankly deserve better. I don't know what the situation is like over there at Sonic Team, but I found it's very rare for video game companies to have great conditions for its developers, so I'm blaming the higher-ups here, but at the end of the day, it just looks lazy, no matter the story behind it. I paused the gameplay to write this section and stumbled across a classic Clip and Sonic moment. Man, this game has some neat ideas, but my goodness, it feels rushed. Much more than that. Sonic, it was their very essences. Do you guys remember those Lost World uh, grinding levels? Yeah? Okay. Uh, well, did you ever want a level like that, but without a new theme, um, and without the 3D segments, and without the good music? What do you mean, no? I thought that was a slam dunk. 
you not enjoy this? It's Green Hill, shitty music and boring level design. That's my jam. After meeting up with Tails a couple of times, both him and Sonic have shown a moment from the past, just like with what happened with Sonic and Knuckles and Amy. Mm -hmm, those are real characters. Although this time, Sonic and Tails are transformed into PNGs. Yeah. I mean, the story here is interesting, I'll tell you that. Something from the sky absolutely wrecks the Earth right in front of them, leading us to wonder what could have caused that, but it's a little jarring to suddenly go from all 3D cutscenes to this. <laughs> First we had the Sonic 3 screenshot, now it's visual novel land. I mean, what's next, the low poly part? Who was it who stopped Eggman from blowing up Station Square? <laughs> oh. I know, I know, I'm kidding around. Despite the weird cut-ins, as I said before, it's nice to finally have our characters to mention previous stories. I mean, Tails name drops Dark Gaia. Uh, obviously, Station Square is mentioned from Sonic Adventure, and they finally bring up the elephant in the room, that being Tails' big-ass butt. Then I'm wildly inconsistent. And a little on the nose, but I can appreciate the self-awareness. Sonic and Tails have some nice moments here. I, I really enjoyed watching their interactions. I think I need to go it alone for a while. I can't grow into my full potential if I always fall back on you. Tails game, Tails game, we're getting a Tails game. And of course, Sega, I know exactly what you're thinking. Yes, I would be honored to play the part of Gas the Worm. Thank you so much for asking. Well, after a classic Tails cutscene, we unlock the power to vent on Reddit, so off we go to the nearest computer. Here we go! I wonder if Twitter's shit in this world, too. Is it weird that this game kind of reminds me of Nier Automata? It's got the triangles and everything. Even the swapping color mechanic is here. What is going on, Sega? You decide to rip off the anime waifu from another series when you've got a perfectly good anime girl that you own? How about instead of these triangle blaster bastardizations, we get a rhythm game, you know, something akin to the ye old popey 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 po, po, po. So far, I've neglected to mention these little treasure chest icon thingies that litter the overworld, mainly due to me not having much to talk about in regards to them. But that changes now! You circle them with the psych loop and get some goodies. <laughs> There's kind of no harm in that, but in the third island, you'll see a ton of these things, and the majority of them just have springs or dash panels, which, by the way, don't stay out once you've found them. Oh no, that'd be convenient. I get the Chaos Emerald here after finding this dash panel, and immediately it turns back into a sign after the cutscene. They're always just kind of taunting you. It, 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 is, is this some treasure or just a boost pad? Who knows? Better waste your time and find out. Damn it! I don't know why they didn't have the boost pads and everything just already in the overworld. Oh, what's the point of making us loop around them first? They're not hidden or anything. It's a giant blue glowing sign. Here's the next cyberspace stage. Holy shit, is that Sky Sanctuary? We haven't seen that since five minutes ago. Do you think that's how Sega like imagines we all react when they show Green Hill in like the latest Sonic trailer? <laughs> This level is perfect for showing off yet another floor with the controls in this game. Now, class, did you see what I did wrong there? The answer is nothing, but hey, I'll explain it anyway. Apparently, if you double jump, then boost, onto a platform, use the a weird bounce stomp, and then try to double jump out of that? Like I hit the ground? Come on, give me a break! I don't even think I could boost either. I'm sure I would have tried it as I fell to my demise. Ugh, and while we're back on the topic of kind of janky controls, here's something I haven't really found the right place to bring up, but hey, what the hell. The homing attack in this game has input stacking. I don't know what the correct term is. Basically, if you mash the homing attack at a line of enemies, Sonic will keep homing attacking even if you stopped pressing the button because it's like got a few of those button presses lined up in its back pocket. It ends up making the homing attack feel even more uncontrollable. Which I mean, it's not awful, again, compared to forces this game is a freaking masterpiece, but I just wish they'd have ironed out all these little kinks and, I, I guess, oversights with Sonic's controls. I, I, I don't think they've updated the game to fix these issues yet, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's intentional, but I, I, that's the case, I just don't think it was a good idea. It makes the game just a little less fun, and, and it doesn't allow you to traverse the levels like you'd expect you could. Actually, a bug with Sonic's controls that they turned into a feature was the homing dash. Not that I figured out I could do it in my playthrough, but yeah, that's pretty cool that they're not patching that one out, because that's a fun way to traverse the level. I just wish that they'd patch some stuff in. That's the thing about this game, there's nothing outright terrible like in Sonic 4... Like in... Sonic... Boom. It's just a bunch of little things that, if they got fixed, would honestly make the experience twice as good. And, and then, which is already decent, you know, so it would be excellent. The, like the rainbow rings, not having a smooth deceleration, making them look a little stiff. Like, it's like nitpick the video game. And I get that nitpicks are nitpicks, but when you've got so many of them, it stops being a nitpick and starts being more of a nit shovel. I'm shoveling nits here. Oddly enough, I kind of like the music in this level. <laughs> Granted, it's not what I would normally listen to, but 
so far it's the song that stood out the most. Especially with the <laughs> Unfortunately the best thing about this stage is the music. It's pretty freaking boring as far as level design goes, just opting in for mainly plain square floating platforms. Uh, either way, we get our S and off we go to new adventures. God, I love the delayed quick step. Here's a cool little challenge, a timed jump rope kind of thing. Uh, unfortunately, you can cheese the hell out of it because Sonic can fly, but hey, I like the idea. We need a few more pieces, but we're having trouble finding them. Is there like boxes of the stuff right here? Tails, are you blind or just lazy? There's another little mini game. This time it's Budget Ratchet and Clank. Uh, break the boxes, collect the bolts, I, I mean parts for the Coco's death machine. Unfortunately, the parts you collect here all have the same sound effect and almost no magnets, so you've got to scrounge around for them. Uh, meaning overall it's pretty unsatisfying to collect them. But hey, who am I to complain? It's a five minute segment in a 20 hour game. Or at least that was my time. I did 100% it after all. Of course, 600 parts ain't enough for Tails. He must have more! Can you take our friend and find a couple more parts? Yeah. Can do. Oh, he really is just oblivious. Sonic's limping away, barely keeping it together, and Tails is like, See you soon, pal! Have fun! What is your end goal? It varies. Sometimes it's a spinning sign, sometimes it's a big old ring. That was very clever. I didn't laugh, but it was very clever. It ain't just me, right? Like, this animation looks really weird, eh? Oh, what's going on here? Sonic's running up a near vertical face. What's he planning on doing here? Oh, 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 whoa! That's a leap and a half. And now I'm hundreds of meters in the air. You're telling me I have to struggle to get any height off an uneven surface, but Sonic's somehow also capable of nonchalantly jumping into orbit? It's another mini game, everybody! Fall! Yep! It's that time again, folks! Another gut-wrenching cyberspace stage! And what do we have this time? Well, you see, Sonic Team went really crazy with this one! They took the 2.5D segments from Generation's chemical plant and put them in this game! I've said it before, but I really enjoyed Sonic and Tails' moments on this island. Feels a lot more natural than Amy and Knuckles' segments, and Roger does a pretty good job here. You're free to go your own way. I guess you just grew up on me a little faster than I expected. Are you saying I outpaced you? Yeah, don't push it. I wish I'd never seen this. It was so much easier accepting the future when they were simply enemies. Holy cow. Holy crap! Is that pinball? I'm excited! Sonic's excited! Wow, this sucks! Where to begin? Firstly, what is the sorry excuse for a pinball board? A couple of bumpers and a set of circles you gotta light up, but god forbid they rotate the ones that are lit up by using the bumpers. No, that actually make lighting them all up possible, like in regular pinball machines! The ball physics in this are... Not even physics. Why does the ball have a set rolling speed? It hits the floor and just goes, like it's been immediately glued to a treadmill. It wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to get such a high score. You're meant to collect the red rings to increase your multiply, but it resets if you die, which you will do, and no, it's not gonna be your fault! I sat on this shit for 15 minutes. Worst part of the game. Literally the worst part. Who approved this? Should have just reskinned the Lost World section. At least that one on actual physics, and I hated it! After that nightmare's over, we teleport outside for a split second and the volcano erupts, which seems like a bit of a harsh price for winning a pinball game if you ask me. However, the lava's heat lifts the mist in the center of the island. If I had a nickel for every game this year that had an island with a big hole in the middle covered in mist, I'd have two nickels. Which blah 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 blah, you know the meme. That titan down there, do you really plan on fighting that? Even as supersonic, that thing is... Not to shout all over Tails' analysis of, you know, looking at it for half a second, but Sonic's beaten the Biolizard, Metal Overlord, Solaris, Dark Gaia, and the Time Eater. What makes you think he can't take down a Titan? Of course, he did have help for all those fights. Uh... Huh. Wait, he's taken down two Titans already! Alright, here we go! What the fight the dope! The Titan fight once again has a rockin' theme plan, but as far as the fight goes, it's the weakest so far, sorry. Uh, a lot of it is taken up by cutscenes, which ain't great already, but then it swaps to a stupid-ass segment where you gotta reflect the night shield back at him, but without the ability to aim the thing like the laser in Colors Ultimate, you know, just 
fucking waggling it around. Combined with my lack of brain power, it took a little longer than it should have. There's a cool moment at the end where Sonic grabs the sword and goes all rules of nature on the time, but you don't actually get to swing it or anything, it's just a cutscene. Also another moment where Sonic appears to have psychokinesis, maybe Amy wasn't that far off the mark. And with that ends the third island, so Sonic heads back to the first island's area, wait how the hell did Tails get here? Sonic's gotta climb all these towers here in his less than pristine condition, I mean look at him, he's exhausted, oh never mind, he's fine. This extra island segment doesn't have anything to collect or do other than climb the towers and stop the, uh, the, the windmills. But with each one you stop, you get a little cutscene involving the Ancients, which eventually uncovers some really mysterious stuff, which quite honestly kept me wanting to learn more. Not that much though, cause we're back on the third island doing some fishing. Gotta get that 100% completion after all. Hey, look at that, I caught a black bass! Hey, wait a minute, that's not black, it's brown! Oh. Oh sick, is that the Ten Commandments? Thou shall not praise Sonic Forces. Oh wow, I might have to convert. Speaking of Sonic Forces, looks like this cyberspace level must have taken inspiration from the level design. This stage weirdly enough introduces a new mechanic. Drifting. Yeah, I don't get it either. It's not like this is an addition to Sonic's moveset, which adds to the gameplay. It's literally an empty stage with no obstacles or hazards. You hit the green dash panels and are forced to drift around the gentle slopes. There's no challenge, there's no enemies. So don't really know why they put this in the game, to be honest. Uh, the only explanation I can come up with is that Sonic was gonna be able to drift in the cyberspace levels, and that's why he can't turn as sharply as he can in the overworld. I mean, remember the sharp turn from Budget Generation's Green Hill that no matter how much you turn, the analog stick Sonic will face plant straight into it? Maybe that's a bit of the old level design they left in. I can imagine, based on the reused assets and previously mentioned level design, that the cyberspace levels were some of the last things to be made in the game development pipeline, or maybe just something they didn't spend that much time on. And maybe designing levels with the drift in mind was something they either just kind of forgot about or couldn't fully implement in time, I don't know. Either way, there's an L2 button just kind of sitting there unused throughout the entirety of the game, so, you know, that's my guess anyway. All in all, the cyberspace level sucks, as I said, there's nothing really to do in it, and the music is... unremarkable? Also, it's Green Hill, so that doesn't help. Speaking of Green Hill, we're back in it for the next level. Did somebody order 2.5D, boring music, and more launches that don't show you what button to press? No? Really? Are you sure? The only notable thing about this level is that the ending reminds me a little bit of Missouri's Day Stage from Sonic Unleashed. And I promise I'll get back to Sonic Unleashed at some point. I lost all the footage and had to restart the whole game. And then when I wanted to start recording it, the PS3 detected my new capture card was a capture card and wouldn't show me anything other than a black screen. So I had to buy an HDMI for it, which I haven't even tested if that actually works yet. But the major problem is trying to gather the strength and motivation to replay Sonic Unleashed. I'm sorry, I just keep getting flashes of those freaking turnstiles, man. Another little nit to shovel about Sonic's controls along the same line of not being able to boost, stomp, or double jump if you've done it prior to landing on a spring, albeit not as big of a deal, it's just something that could be improved. Uh, Sonic's stomp stops you from boosting for a little bit uh, once you've hit the ground. Obscene, I know. It's just a little something I thought I'd point out as it happens enough to the point where I felt like I was actually losing a little bit of time with each stomp. Sometimes I felt like stomping was actually slower than just falling to the ground. And the stomp in general in this game just feels kind of stiff and a bit janky. Sometimes it'll do the weird bounce jump, sometimes it won't. Just another little quirk to add to the list, I guess. Well, I've gone to the last challenge on the island, but apparently it's deep down into the lava stream. This really confused me. I, I thought maybe I'd messed up and was meant to do it before the lava came out of the volcano, or maybe there was a secret underground tunnel I was meant to go to. Uh, uh, nope. Turns out this icon's the pinball minigame that we completed before, and it just didn't I burped great. Turns out this icon's the pinball minigame that we completed before, and it just didn't mark it as finished on the map. The real last challenge wasn't actually visible because it was in one of those map spots that I hadn't unlocked yet. No idea how this one slipped through in development, but I have a feeling I might be able to guess! Now here's where I learned that the drop dash actually has a reason to be in the game! I know! Even though there's literally no reason to use this thing 99% of the time over the boost, apparently it scales hills Sonic usually can't climb effortlessly! You could spend 40 minutes trying to make it up this hill with the boost and then just drop dash and Bob's your uncle! And he would think that's just great! Unfortunately, the game doesn't, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, tell you this, meaning you gotta figure it out for yourself, which I didn't do until the very end of the only island you're gonna really need it, so yay! Another thing the game doesn't tell you about, but is actually a little easter egg, so, you know, it's fine. Uh, a neat little thing for those who find it, is that if you do a little figure eight with the psych loop, you'll have infinite boost for... Well, a good while. I didn't actually know about this on my first playthrough, only when I streamed a second one and chat told me about it. Don't, um... Uh, 
Don't ask what's happening here. Well, after one more optional cutscene with Tails where he name drops the Eclipse Cannon, look, I'm glad the older fans are finally being acknowledged, but when you go from zero callbacks in the latest games to 50 in this one, it starts getting a little, uh, you know. <laughs> I go thinking about this game to thinking about the older ones with, you know, more level themes than just Green Hill, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary, and Speed Highway. Yeah, that's cool and all, but, I mean, they built these things to shoot at something. Wow, what kind of enemy takes that much firepower to stop? Probably the final boss, I'm guessing, which I am very much looking forward to. If the tank fights are just the regular boss fights in this game, then what kind of batshit insane sort of battle are we gonna be looking at? I bet it's gonna be real cool. Well, we're back to good old Assassin's Creed or uh, uh, Ubisoft, uh, Far Cry, something I never played those games, Tower Climbing Simulator. And you can give these segments the most epic music you like, Sonic Team, it doesn't stop them from being made out of the same assets that have been used throughout the entire game in a 2.5D segment on an island, which I've already been to. Although there are a few 3D moments here and there, which is nice, but the majority of them are 2.5D. I didn't aim at that, I didn't aim at that. Oh, here's an enemy we haven't seen before. You gotta figure out that you need to stomp a couple of times to break it open from the inside. It's great the first time you figure it out, but then they make you do it again like five more times, so it gets old pretty quick. Funnily enough, being inside these enemies is the only time you'll actually hear the drowning theme. If for some reason they didn't opt to play it in the rest of the drownable water segments in the game. Speaking of drowning, it's nice to see they paid attention to where Sonic's nose is when he's standing in a pool of water. And no longer will you immediately die in ankle deep water. Check it out! Now that's attention to detail! Oh, nope, he had his nose out of the water and didn't reset the meter. I'm gonna go shit and save his mailbox. As you shut down more and more of the towers, Sonic becomes more and more afflicted by his cyber illness, which I mean is kind of his own fault. He shouldn't have been going on so many dodgy websites. We learn from the little snippets of flashbacks we get that the Chaos Dudes came to this planet from outer space as there was a great evil entity which they were escaping from. And what did they bring with them? Why, the Chaos Emeralds, of course. I have to stop saying it like that. You heard me right, though. The Chaos Emeralds are from the Aliens world, not Sonic's. Uh, the, they react to the Master Emerald, drawing the alien ship in, and man, when I first learned this, I, I mean, it didn't really change anything in the grand scheme of things, but damn, the alien Chaos Emeralds, that's kinda cool. And it, it, it could mean that there's other assorted super gems out there in space somewhere. If Sonic's world, which I'm desperately trying not to call Mobius, dear Lord Sega, please just give it a freaking name already, had the Master Emerald uh, and the aliens had the Chaos Emeralds, I mean, we've already got the Soul Emeralds, but they're from another dimension, not from outer space. I, I want to see Sonic go super with like 50 Chaos Emeralds. What would he have, like Crocs? Also, I kind of wish there was a game where Sonic could utilize the Chaos Emeralds a little better, like he and Shadow could use Chaos Control with one, but uh, from two to six, they might as well just be Gamersup's waifu cups you can buy with a discount of 10% by using Code Radical. Yeah, that was seamless. I'd love to see some more Chaos abilities, which could, you know, add extra gameplay features. Shadow's got Chaos Snap, Chaos Blast, and of course, both he and Sonic have Chaos Control. Come to think of it, Sonic has at least one Chaos Emerald with him throughout the whole game, but never uses Chaos Control. I mean, I know it's sort of still Shadow's thing, but come on, come on! Look at how cool this shit is. Let him have it, come on! So anyway, back on topic, it uh, turns out the Titans were used to fight the evil entity out in space before it could reach the Earth, but the blobby alien guys were outmatched, so one of them sacrificed themselves in order to absorb the entity into their Titan and lock it into cyberspace. Meanwhile, in the color red, Yep, Sonic managed to save his friends, but as a result took on way too much uh, uh, cyber energy. That's really what they call it. And now is stuck between realities, or at least that's how Tails puts it. I, I don't really get it, to be honest. Eggman's here too. Uh, Sage figured out a way to get him out of cyberspace, even though she said, Don't do it, man! Sonic's unleashing a big old bad guy from cyberspace, and if I just told him that, we probably could have avoided all this shit, but you have to stay here where it's safe. But Eggman's all like, Oh, hell no, dog! Get me out of here! I've had enough of Speed Highway, man! I don't even have a car! Since time immemorial. I have languished here. The locks are broken. Now I shall tear down the walls between dimensions and consume all. I will admit this is pretty cool. They've really built this thing up. Oh, right, and I should probably mention that the voice in the sky Sonic's been listening to the whole game. Yeah, that was the evil entity. Uh, good going, Sonic. I guess that's what happens when you try and put words in someone's mouth. Sonic worked too hard for us to give up now. Those visions we saw, we can drive back the corruption and bring him back. <gasps> Are we about to place these guys like in Sonic 06 where everyone teamed up to get the Chaos Emeralds? Uh, they're, holding, they're holding hands? Uh... Sonic, I want you to see the hero I become. Sonic, you still have love to share with this world too. Sonic, we're even after this. <laughs> And with the power of friendship, I guess, Sonic's back! 
With no corruption, I... <laughs> What? Everyone. What kind of bull crap kind of writing was that? What, you hold hands and say nice things and now he's fine? It, it, damn, looks like I've been doing it all wrong. Forget going to the doctor, or in this case, running an antivirus scan. All you need to do is hold hands and pray. I don't have anyone to hold hands with. And now it's up to Sonic and Eggman to work together to save the day. <clears throat> And by work together, Eggman finds like one Chaos Emerald and that's kind of it. Well, good job, dude. Well, well done. Here we are on the last... What island am I on? Yep, turns out the final island uses the same area assets as the first and the fourth. If you count that one as an island, it's got the same gears, the same cocos, even it's got the same freaking heart collectible as the first. You couldn't have even just changed the color. Sage is the character we need him for this time, so make him turquoise or cyan or whatever color Sage turns into when she's afflicted with the power of love. No, we got pink hearts for Amy, Sonic's love interest, and pink hearts for Sage, a child. Then again, Amy's a child too. Sonic, you creep. Not that Amy's really even the same character in this game, you might as well have replaced her with Sally Acorn. Her personality in this game really do just be serious girl. Anyway, the way this island is played out with the reusing of the assets from the first one makes me think that the development team must have been running out of time real bad at this point. One thing that might have helped here was maybe altering the landscape or the sky to reflect how close the evil entity is getting, you know, like foliage dying and turning white, the sky turning red, you know, that sort of thing. I don't know, man, this screams final level to me as much as Sonic Forces Green Hill screams apocalyptic Eggman Empire takeover. Or Sand Hill. Don't worry, though, because the final island's got some crazy new challenges. Like Born on Platforms. Also got some crazy new cyberspace levels. Like, like chemical blood? Oh, boy, nothing's better than a good old chemical... Gosh, I love the new direction they're taking with the music in this game. Why didn't they do it earlier? As far as I'm aware, this is meant to be Metal Harbor from Sonic Adventure 2, except there's no rocket, just a cannon from Generations, and you get on a skateboard near the end. Which I would like to see more of, and unfortunately here the use is pretty limited. Uh, only in this small, straightforward segment, really. Unfortunately, this level's got a few weird bugs. I, I fell through this hang glider at one point. At two points. If for some reason the quick step would sometimes trigger twice, I think when I quick stepped onto a dash panel, it's not the end of the world, I know, just another little nit they can pick out if they get the time. Overall, this level is unremarkable, a, a lot like the other cyberspace levels. It's 3D, so, you know, it's more fun to speedrun, but it still just kind of blends in with all the others. You really need interesting gimmicks, hazards, obstacles, set pieces, and a distinct theme if you want a level to be memorable. Wait, is now the only memorable thing about it is the music, and that's not really a good thing. Everyone. Thank you. I won't let you down. Big spot is just out in the open for everyone to find now, which is kind of weird because usually it's in a somewhat hidden area, in the other levels at least. I guess they didn't have the time to make a hidden area, and that's a blue ringed octopus! Yep! Sonic, your friends literally sacrificed themselves to save you, and I don't think you're really feeling the gravitude of that. Here's one of the mini-bosses on the final island, Caterpillar. This one's nothing too special, just a sort of strider segment where you grind around hitting the blue balls, and then you just wail away on it until it shoots lasers around, and, and you know, overall not too hard, but it's all right. Uh, oh. Woo! A cyberspace level that ain't just Green Hill, Chemical Plant, or Sky Sanctuary! I hate that they're reusing so many level themes, it's taking me longer and longer to complain. In this cyberspace stage, the Lightspeed Dash does this! Every time! I have no idea why! This is another full 3D level, which is nice, yes, but again, and I must apologize for saying this every time, it's completely forgettable. The stage layout, the music, the obstacles, all blending together in the food processor that is cyberspace. This level also really amplifies how slow Sonic feels in the cyberspace levels. This first segment really stands out. I mean, it doesn't help that all the cars are stationary. I really thought they were supposed to be moving. This is a highway, right? Zoinks! Look out, gang! It's a g -g 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 mini boss in the critically acclaimed to video game Sonic Frontiers! Those still suck you off and swallow all your hard-earned rings unless you sight loop his big long shaft here. Of course, when the ground is uneven, it can make that task a little frustrating. Hell yeah, what though, Ghost's theme?
Damn, now that's what I call slapping. Honestly, the music here, and combined with the design of this thing, uh, and its cry, immediately made me think of Pokemon Ultra Beasts, like a mix between Nihiligo and the clown thing. And not that that's a bad thing, no, in fact, it makes me like it even more. You know, despite the marketing showing these cool walls you can run on a bunch, they really didn't utilize them all that well. Uh, there's one on the first island here, and then there's two areas on the last one. It, it kind of sucks, because wall running has always been a cool thing in Sonic games. Like, in Lost World, I freaking hate that game, but the wall running? That's fun! This, however, is not fun. Welcome to the next cyberspace level. Can you guess what the level theme is here? I'll give you a hint, I'm gonna shoot myself. <sighs> Usually with the cyberspace stages, I'll at least remember some small part of it and say, like, you know, Oh yeah, I remember that one small bit there. And this one's just fucking blitzed out of my memory. I have no recollection of this stage whatsoever. Like, is it a badly designed level? I don't think so, but does it do anything, you know, interesting? There's a bit at the end you fall down and you gotta kill three enemies so the gold ring can blip into existence. So I'm gonna say no. Here's a fun little troop of enemies. They surround you and you gotta parry them one by one. Which is incredibly easy because you don't have to time it. Man, I, like, I could understand the infinite parry on easy mode, but hard? This is just a waste of time. Did I say that already? Have I already talked about parry maybe not being infinite on easy? I mean, hard? I mean, anyway. The final island's got a few recolors of previous mini bosses like the red tower and the white ninja. I wasn't going to mention them at first, but I figured someone out there's favorite mini-boss is one of these recolors, and they'd be oh so disappointed if I didn't talk about them. Uh, so yep, they exist. I remember way back in the very first cyberspace level, I mentioned that Sonic has momentum when jumping if he's moving up against the wall beforehand. Well, here's where it becomes a problem. What foreshadowing? Combine this weird interaction with the drop dash and Sonic's shitty aerial control and you've got yourself a recipe for one stinking pissed off Radical Soda. Or at least you would if I wasn't the world's most skilled gamer of all time and saved myself from an early demise. Oh yeah, that's right ladies. I don't know if the cyberspace level is based on any other previous level in particular, I don't think so, but unfortunately this is yet again another completely forgettable one. There's really not much to say about it either, it's pretty short and linear. It likes abusing the little fans. Like a Minecraft YouTuber. But you know what I like more than Minecraft YouTubers? Chemical Plant! They're both pretty low down on the tier list. Did somebody say 2.5D? You know, I feel like I've seen this level design before. Like, it's trying to be classic Chemical Plant here. And the platforms and pipes at the start with the ramps going downwards and the speed boosts. Could it have really killed them to come up with some new ideas? After another hacking minigame, which now that I'm looking at more clearly, I think you could just leave one little guy alive and keep wailing away at the core here. It, it, the other little guys don't spawn until the rest are dead. Would, would that work? Or would the game just not let you kill it? I'll check on my stream, I'll put the result here. Okay, so it turns out the little guys disappear on their own, so you can just keep wailing away at the core, but it's you can't just keep one alive and do that. So, you know, uh, they, they thought about it, I guess. Oh. Furthermore, my name holds no meaning. Well, sure it does. Eggman named you that for a reason. That means you're important to him. You... think he cares about me? Well, sure. In his own way. Hey, time's a wasting. Let's wrap this up. Oh, that delivery was so good, but the animation! The animation! Come on! Please, for the love of God, give the next Sonic game a decent budget. I don't want to get stuck in Ratchet and Clank conversation land going forward, please. You think with how many times you have to put gears in these things, I would have noticed Sonic's leak before release. Man, we're absolutely just blasting through these cyberspace levels, mainly because there's less and less for me to talk about in the overworld. Hey, it's another highway stage, which again is nice because we haven't seen it 16 billion times in other games. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is another original level layout here, which is nice. However, it is indeed completely unmemorable, just like the others. Sorry, forgot I had to hit the ground first before I could boost again in the air because springs don't count! The music here has given me aquatic bass vibes from Sonic 06. 
I think combined with the switch sound effect from the same game, it's been upgraded to freaking flashbacks. Flashbacks to Green Hill, that is! Did someone say shit light speed dash? Might as well call it the dash which stops you, so why use it, I guess? <laughs> I want to make something clear real quick. I have been sharting all over the level designs for these stages, and I think that's fair. They've all been pretty uninspired, I feel, you know, with the theming and the way they're set up. But I will state again, because this video was long and some people may have forgotten, I am happy at least somewhat, that Sonic is finally fun to control again. That's what a lot of people have been asking for a long time, and I'm glad we finally have a good step in the right direction. I love boosting in the air with this control scheme, and that's why the spring boost thing annoys me so much. Because it'd be even more fun if I could boost, hit a spring, and then boost again. And when the levels are this easy, making it fun rather than difficult seems like the best option. Here's hoping they'll fix them up either in an update or a new game so we can have even more fun controlling them. Anyway, this stage is kind of interesting. I actually remembered it existed. Um, there's a lot of flying and uh, choosing your path with your momentum uh, instead of just quick stepping or rail switching to another path. A neat idea, if a little simple. It uh, seems the majority of these cyberspace stages that introduce a new idea basically only does that idea for the entire stage's length, meaning instead of it being sprinkled in here and there for a bit of variety, you just get sick of it by the end, but oh well. Nothing to calm the green hill induced psychosis than a bit of fishing, am I right? How relaxing. I'm so used to using the Chaos Emeralds, it's kind of hard to accept they're from space. Yes, they were central to the Ancients' power and native to their world. They are the only things that can awaken all the functions on the island, and were taken away with the last survivors to another land. That's an interesting line there. It means that indeed there were survivors from the Chaos Guy civilization, but that also brings up another question. Where are they? Well. As always, the internet's come up with the answer, or at least a theory. Uh, you could even call it some sort of game theory. Chow. The ancients evolved into Chow. And that's why the mutated Chow, Chaos, looks like an ancient. That's pretty cool. But before things get too cool, it's Chemical Plant again! Every year, three to five people are killed by chemical plant overexposure. Donate and save a soul today. Man, it sure is another chemical plant stage. Wahoo! Yeah! Oh boy, it's 20 seconds long! Ah! Look out! I'm reusing jokes! Hey, check it out! Skateboard level! Now this is poggers. I wish the skateboard had more mechanics like tricks and drifting and stuff, though. Mm. And with that, I think that's every single cyberspace stage. So! To wrap things up, uh, there was six speed highway levels, six sky sanctuary levels, eight chemical plant levels, and <laughs> I can't freaking believe that it beat Sonic Forces, but holy shit, ten, count them, ten green hell stages! The bar was low, Sonic Team, but you somehow managed to move it even lower. Looking at the wiki here, it turns out that more stages than I thought took level design from all the Sonic games. Seems that only seven of the stages were actually original, and even then, are we really gonna call this original? Drifting in Green Hill, how fucking boring can you get? Apparently the highway level is actually called Eternal Highway, which is pretty neat. If that have actually told me the stage's name in the game, maybe I wouldn't have had to call it Speed Highway this entire time, but hey, better late in a fan wiki than never, right? And this is the last one, right? I don't want any more surprises. I can confirm only four were constructed. Well then let's do it to it. We're out of time. I don't think Sonic was the only one out of time. Oh, Sega, please. It it. Eggman hands over the final Chaos Emerald to Sonic and he gets ready to fight the final Titan, Supreme. Which of course, as we know, has the evil entity stuck inside it. Remember that whole space shenanigan hubble 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 I wrote hubble why am I- <laughs> What the fuck? Now, at this point in the game, I'd maxed out stats, so I kicked his ass five times over in one combo, but they really, really want you to hear the music, so eventually he just kind of stopped doing damage to him, which really sucks. It took him ages to pull out his gun, so I could actually land the final blow. Uh, kind of an underwhelming time fight, unfortunately, but we've still got the final boss, the evil entity to deal with, because according to Sage, all we did was chase it out of its shell. So, Sage takes over the hollow husk of a titan to join Sonic in space for the final battle. Surprisingly, at Eggman's concern. Be careful, dear daughter. Damn it, you can't make me feel things for Eggman. You can't, why my feelings? This is kind of intimidating, I'm not gonna lie here. Oh my. He took your home world. He took your lives. Are you going to let him do it all over again? 
I need your help. We can end this. Please. I'm sorry, what? Mortal, you have served your purpose. Shut up for a second, they moon pie. This is a bit of the first phase. For, for the first phase of the fight, uh, what I'll compare it to is uh, being the Dark Gaia boxing match with Chip from Sonic Unleashed. You control Sage and do the uh, uh, the, the hacking mini game. Uh, uh, but now, you can move upwards. And also, it's really hard. I would understand making it hard if it was Sonic I was controlling. I mean, at least then I've got a lot of experience fighting and could actually utilize everything I've learned up until that point. But no! It's gotta be the hacking mini game, of course. Ah! The health bar is so big, your little pea shooter barely makes a dent. I feel like I'm watching dial up in there here trying to download a nude rouge PNG. Oh, hey, look a tip. Ah, I see how this makes things a lot easier. Like, this could be a cool first phase in a game where this sort of gameplay takes priority, or, you know, it didn't last as long as it does, but eh, whatever, I mean, I, I picked hard mode, I guess that means sidelining me with an incredibly tough boss with new mechanics after a whole game of easy platforming and basic combat means I'm not allowed to complain. The end is big, like the biggest final boss so far, like the, the Titans are on a regular final boss scale, so the end is freaking gigantic. <gasps> We're almost done. We're almost there. I'm not, I'm not doing any more damage. I really gotta wait for it to finish its freaking speech? Okay, but let's stop talking. I... No! There better be a checkpoint. Oh, of course there isn't. Why would there be a checkpoint, silly me? It's fine, I've got the hang of it now. Yeah! 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 Oh, 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 oh. Am, I, am I there? Am I there? I did it! I did it! Cutscene! Cutscene! Checkpoint! I hope! Yes! Throw me! Let's go! God! Yeah! What? The square! I'm, I'm pressing! I'm, pre I'm pressing square! <laughs> okay, so let me ask you something. In a game, where every time I'd need to mash the button in a boss fight, it comes up with this, and whenever I need to time a button press, it comes up with this, why in the friggin' frackin' poopy pants would they introduce a new timed quick time event in a very hard boss fight that takes quite frankly too long, and by the time you figure it out, it's too late? I don't know, but I bet it's because they hate us! Okay, here I go, finally, I did it! Okay, no, ah, not again! Sonic blasts straight through the end, but it's got one final trick up its crater, and Sage sacrifices herself in order to save Sonic. There's a lot of S's in there, and this is where the second phase starts, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Sonic meets up with his loving friends, and Eggman mourns the loss of his daughter. Credits roll! I guess. Father, I just want to tell you. Thank you for all that you've given me. I'm really going to miss you. Wow, Sega. I'm not a masochist, you know. You don't have to kick me in the balls quite that hard. First you give me a shit final boss fight. Then you kill Sage and make Eggman depressed and Knuckles still doesn't have his hat? Wow. Do you remember way back when I said hard mode was the intended experience? Well, the reason I said that is because if you don't pick that, the game skips the bullet hell segment and just cuts to the quick time event. That's right, if you're playing on normal, the final boss amounts to a couple of presses of the square button. Woo! Last cutscene with Sonic of Friends shows that he doesn't give a shit that Sage is dead, canonizes sticks, and then they fly into the sunset to the tune of another vocal song, which still isn't vandalized. Not that I care, I don't like that song, and this one's better. Okay, so it turns out vandalized was the credits theme for easy and normal mode, which is fine. Again, I don't really give a shit, just pointing it out so people don't get mad at me. Come to think of it, Crush 40 wasn't here either. I mean, we got some great time themes, but... Man, I feel like their style would have been great for this. Like, they were made to do the final boss themes in Sonic games. You can't just use them for a mediocre racing game and then trash them, Sega. That's not enough.
There is a final secret cutscene here, thankfully, where Eggman's PS5 has gone into rest mode, so he's desperately trying to change his power saving settings. But as a result of this, he finds Sage, or a backup or something of her, probably a real self uploaded into cyberspace, so she's not really dead, which is great, uh, because she's a pretty neat character, and there's some interesting stories to tell with her, I feel. What with her being on both Sonic and Eggman's side. And that's Sonic Frontiers! Uh, you unlock arcade mode for, uh, you know, uh, beating the game, which allows you to replay the cyberspace stages, although uh, replaying the boss fights too would have been nice. Honestly, I feel like it was a bit of a mixed bag, but overall a step in the right direction. And that's not a step in the right direction like Pokemon, where uh, they have a couple of ideas, but then like the rest of the game is a huge pile of shit. No, I like most of the ideas they brought up here, and uh, honestly, I'm really excited to see uh, uh, where they go with them and expand upon them and, and fix, you know, the, the, the odd thing here and there in the future. Um, but of course, that is if they stay with the style, if there's one consistent thing uh, we know about Sonic games is that they're not consistent. But that's not all, of course. Much like other video games nowadays, Sonic Frontiers is getting some much needed free DLC. And with that, comes improvements. I have no idea when this video is coming out, but at the time of writing, we've got this neat little roadmap ahead of us, which the only thing in and I'm really interested in is the extra playable characters and story. It's been so long since we've been able to play as these guys, and I really hope they do them justice. I'm guessing, before we have any details about it, that it'll be the characters' first experiences with cyberspace, so probably just a few cyberspace levels per character. I hope there's more than that, but it's free DLC, so I don't know. A couple years back, they were trying to charge for Supersonic, so... <laughs> Who knows? On the topic of DLT, there was some other stuff like the Monster Hunter costumes and Corona DLC, uh, and a bunch of other random stuff too. Uh, honestly, I don't really care much about all that, but I do think it was pretty scummy to lock DLC behind living in another country. Like, what the fuck? Really, Sega? Now, since making this video, the first batch of DLC has been released, and while I haven't played any of the challenge modes just yet, I am not making this video take any longer. They look fun enough, and eventually I'll give them a go. Uh, if Sam's playthrough was anything to go by, it looked like a blast and a half, so... You're like the embodiment of the nerd emoji sometimes. Um, actually... <laughs> <laughs> Can I? I parried. I parried. I saved it. No! Uh, wait, wait! I parried. I saved it. I'm saving now. I'm saving right now. Can do it. Wow. Okay. All right. Oh my god, there was another one. Wait, uh, you're gonna kill it, me, baby. <laughs> so I... Now, the photo mode, I tried it for like five minutes, but it's not really my thing. I could never get the angle I wanted. It controls really weirdly, but, you know, again, other people have had some success with it, so whatever, who cares. Now, the jukebox mode, uh, hot diggity dog, I didn't expect this. Uh, I thought it was just gonna be like a glorified sound test, like in Sonic Origins, but no, no. Uh, there's little notes scattered throughout the overworld, and you can collect them to unlock songs from previous Sonic games, and, uh, you know, let them play as you explore. That's pretty cool. Ever since Generations had a track select for its levels, I kept hoping for the feature to come back in some way, and hey, this is basically as good as that's gonna get. Uh, aside from two major flaws with it. Okay, one, uh, you can't change the cyberspace stage music. I don't think. I won't dwell on this for too long in case I'm wrong, but as far as I could tell and, you know, look online, I, I don't think it's possible. And that kind of sucks. Uh, you could make the argument they opted to leave the cyberspace levels out as some of the music wouldn't fit them, but... You know. Okay, floor number two. Uh, what is this track list? There's a little over ten unlocked from the beginning, so that's fine, you know, but one of them is the final Titan theme, what the heck's going on with that? And then there's 40 other tracks to find scattered throughout the open zones. And 40 sounds like a big number, but it's... it's really not. That's like one game's worth. Like, I, I was really expecting something a little more substantial. I, I get that it's a free update and all, but is moving over a couple more MP3 files really all that difficult? Will that, will that have really costed that much more? If you can get Seaside Hill, Ocean Palace, and Frog Forest from Sonic Heroes, why not throw a couple of other level themes in as well? Ah, uh, you know, Final Fortress, anyone, Egg Fleet, you know, something? No tracks from Sonic 1 or Sonic 2 are anywhere to be found. Uh, you'd expect what with the Green Hill and Chemical Plant abuse they've got going on, you'd think they were a priority. But I guess they must have thought that'd be too much. Uh, let's just ignore the fact that there's two different versions of Sky Sanctuary snuck in there. What the hell is this? Four Lost World tracks? And four Sonic Forces tracks, all right. And one of those is the menu theme. Talk about missed opportunities. Like, I really hope there's mods out there to add more tracks because this selection kind of blows, not gonna lie. Uh, let me know what you guys think. 
Uh, I have no idea when the next update's coming out, you know, with Sonic's birthday and all that stuff, but needless to say, I'm not going to be waiting to talk about it here. Maybe once the final update comes out, I'll talk about it, along with the other stuff I haven't finished yet, you know, the challenge modes and all that. But either way, uh, color me excited to see what happens with that when we eventually get to it. For once, I am finally looking forward to the next Sonic game. I had zero faith, literally zero, <laughs> that this game would be anything other than at best mediocre. And yes, it does have some big problems, uh, mostly, you know, the pop in, the cyberspace levels, the unfinished final boss fight, which I do hear is apparently getting a free update to maybe add more to it, which, which again, is nice, uh, but it, it should have really been finished when the game came out. Like, <laughs> But overall, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't say this is an incredible game that you have to rush out and buy now, but uh, I enjoyed my time with it. I would even play it again sometime. And uh, I don't think it's worth quite $112, uh, but if it's on sale, I might say go for it. Why not? I'm going to get this video out, and then the DLC is going to be all out. And people are like, hey, why didn't you talk about the DLC? And I'll say, sorry, I'm a, I'm, I, 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 I'm a horrible person that doesn't finish videos quickly. And I'm not funny at all. Ooh, thank you, Patreons, for coming in.